Support for The Gaming Outsider is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code THEGOCAST at manscaped.com. Happy New Year, GoCo! On episode 380, Zach and CB join me to share our gaming resolutions for 2022. In news, the PlayStation VR 2 has been announced and Ubisoft Plus is coming to Xbox, along with the possibility of the original GoldenEye. New games discussed include Ember and The Pedestrian. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 380 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It's Monday, January 10th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my friends, Chris Behrensmeyer. What's up, CB? <gasps> you said my name! I did. Sometimes I like you. Yeah. That's what <laughs> they think. Yeah. How you been? Ah, uh, not too bad. It's, it's been a good week, man. Has it been a good week? I'm it happy has. for you, because it's been a craptastic week for me, but... Like I said, very, you know, very vir- happy for you. Virtual hug. Virtual hug, bro. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Also joining us, the proud owner of something very special, near and dear to his heart, Mr. Zach Parkerson. What's up, man? I think I know what you're referring to. Yeah? What am I referring to? Probably uh, the new air fryer I got. The new air fryer, yes. I definitely Dude, aren't was they referring great? to uh, a new you know, air I haven't, fryer. haven't taken it out of the box yet. <laughs> it but looks it's... good in the box, though. I'm sure it does. Now, well, it's, you know, my mom said she was going to be one for Christmas, and for the first time, I think, in 30 years, she was true to her word. Nice. You won't be disappointed. They're great. But anyway, that's not what I was referring to. Oh. What are you referring to? Go ahead. Tell everybody what you got. Oh, I got a PlayStation 5. Yes! Zach it's... is now the owner of a PlayStation 5 and zero games. <laughs> well, I guess uh, Astro's Play... The Returnal was supposed to come today... But uh, it didn't. The USPS said they couldn't get in my building, so that sucks. Oh, oh! I'm gonna I'm fight. I'm, I have to go down there tomorrow. It sucks. I'm still surprised because I honestly thought you were going to get a Series X first. Yeah, well, PlayStation sent me this email that was like, uh, you know, we're sending this out to our, you know, um, big time players, people who invest a lot of time into PlayStation, get, get trophies, our most hardcore players, and here's a four hour window to purchase one. And I was like, you know. I do want. I wanted one before Elden Ring because I wanted to play that on PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. So now I have that peace of mind for that. Good. Well, you'll be you'll be ready. Yeah, it is. Um, it is like it's weird because I'm like excited that I have the console, but uh, I'm not really <laughs> I'm not really excited for like any PS Five games. Mm-hmm. You know, I picked up Returnal because I'm like, like I felt like I'm somehow emotionally obligated to buy a PS Five game. Mm-hmm. So I get I that. Up. Yeah, so so I got so I got Returnal. It does look cool. I watch I watch a little YouTube video. Uh, shout out to Skill Up. Uh, it does it does kind of look up my alley in some ways. So uh, you know I'm I'm excited. Ooh, I I actually should mail you my uh, PS5 copy of Miles Morales so you can see the difference. Well, I have a f- oh no, I was gonna say I have a free digital upgrade, but it's uh, Sony, so I don't have a free digital upgrade because <laughs> oh, yeah. they, they suck. Just a shame. Yeah. He says they suck as he just spent five hundred dollars. Well, okay, so I was gonna say, don't worry, audience. I'll, I will <laughs> keep coming at Sony because because I love PlayStation so dearly. I want to see it at its best. Mm-hmm. So there are easy ways to do that, like offer the same upgraded path. Absolutely, every single other company is doing. Mm-hmm. Oh man, now I just realized something else. You have to buy a four K TV. I have one. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Cool. There we go. See, it's all good. Dude, shout out to my dad, because he got me a 4K TV for Christmas. Nice. It's all coming up. Everything's coming up, Zach, for the first time in history. Cool, man. There you go. So, did you, have you played anything on it? I know you, you got well, Returnal I, coming. Yeah, I guess we're going to jump right into the games we've been catching up on. Yeah. I've been play, I played about 30 to 40 minutes of Astro's Playroom before we got in here. Mm-hmm. What a delight. Isn't it? I'm, smi- I'm smiling, smiling pretty much the entire time. Yeah. For one thing, it's nice to see what this controller can do, and I will say it, it, it's almost immediately the best controller I've ever held in my hands. It just feels so right. Thank you. She <laughs> disagrees yeah. with you, but I you love the disagree. controller. I think, I mean, I'll always have a special place in my heart for the GameCube controller, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. and that button layout. But yeah, that, that PlayStation controller is nice. 
Ashless Playroom is a total celebration of video games. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. I, in my short time, I have seen uh, the Buster Sword. I've seen Pyramid Head, a, a uh, Astro Bot little cutie guy with a cone on his head and dragging uh, another one off like the mannequin scene in Silent Hill 2. Uh, I just found a reference to the Impossible game, which was a PS3 mini release in like 2007. So that's, I can't, it's very obscure reference. Uh, they, they love PlayStation the way I thought only I love PlayStation. It's, 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 it's pretty incredible to see. Yeah, it's I, much more than just a, de- like a, a tech demo, like we all kind of thought it was going to be, which. Well, and it definitely it is. is that, right? Yeah. It, it's going out of its way to make sure you're using every feature. And I assumed it was just going to be that, or and it's not like a very challenging game or, um, you know, it's not pushing you to the limits, but it really is just. It's like, hey, you got a new console. I bet you probably want to smile with it. Mm-hmm. You know, here, here's a few hours to do that. It's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm still surprised they did put a lot of love into that. Well, it, it's amazing because every time you can find those hidden artifacts in there, and every time I have a stupid, dumb grin on, grin on my face because it's like the artifacts are PlayStation multi tap, and I'm like I remember that, and you can, <laughs> and it's like this high quality 3D render of it that you can rotate around and really investigate. It's I am very impressed with Astro's Playroom. Uh, you know, if, uh, I do have the new, new shine to it, recency bias, I suppose, but uh, it's 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 a lot of fun. It does show off the controller quite well, though. Too the first time that you like unzip something with the with the the touchpad, and mm-hmm. it felt like you were unzipping something on your controller. That was kind of rad. Well, yeah, we, there, uh, I just did some paragliding, and it actually felt like the wind was going through. It felt like I was holding on to a bar cutting through the wind. Yeah. It was, the whatever the rumble is, is very impressive. The shame of it is, it will never get used, because these kind of features never do. Mm-hmm. But it's cool that it's there. One cool thing, I think I talked about this when I played Deathloop a little bit, is I know that this isn't a new feature with PS5, but there's the speaker. On it, mm-hmm, yeah. so whenever you play Deathloop and you're talking to Juliana, is that her name? Yeah, Juliana. Uh, I, don't her, know, I, mean, I guess I don't know, but we'll just say yeah. Okay, all of her when she talks to you, that voice comes through the controller. Oh yeah, I mean that was a that's a standard thing on PS4 since was launch. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah. I know but you. Yeah, you're more of an Xbox feller. Yeah, I always turn that off in games though. Do I think it's kind of a cool feature? I liked it for audio logs in like Arkham Knight and in Bioshock or whatever, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It it, it can be because some the volume is always different in every game, so it's just really annoying sometimes. I gotcha. I gotcha. So digging that, you're gonna. You said you got Returnal coming, which I'm excited to hear your thoughts on that because that's one that I have been, I, I've been wanting to get, but I just keep waiting to get to a price point that I feel like I want to pay. <laughs> I know that makes me sound like a cheapskate. But... No, I mean I, I found it on eBay for forty bucks, and that felt fair to me. Okay, seventy dollars yeah. is outrageous for that game. And when is Elden Ring? February 25th. Boy. All right. So, that's... so it's, I'm going to have to skip Horizon, I think. But what are you going to do? That's all right. I got you. <laughs> I'm sure. And you'll probably skip Elden Ring. So, you know, we'll, we'll I mean, I was skipping Elden Ring anyway. Like, yeah. uh, Souls games are not my thing. Although, I had a buddy of mine text me this weekend and, and just randomly text me and tell me that uh, what, a, what a masterpiece Bloodborne is. And it just kind of makes is. me want to go back yeah. and, and try that one again. Absolute, absolute masterpiece. Just it's just I, I'm just so bad, dude. It was in, it was in my top ten for uh, the the list I put on the site, man. Bloodborne is yeah immaculate. Yeah. Well, my, he told me he asked me. He's like, "Did you finish uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order?" And I said, "Yeah." And he's like, "If you can do that combat, you'd probably be okay with Bloodborne eventually." Yeah. So that gave me hope, but I could never get the parry thing down. With with well, Bloodborne focuses on it much less. Okay. It's much right. more about. Dodging takes priority in, in Bloodborne. Okay. So if you ever played a Devil May Cry, I guess. I don't know. A little bit. I think I think the marshmallow one is the is the one I played the most. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> CB, what about you? Anything you've been catching up on this week? Nope. Just uh working on the game collection. That's about it. Yeah, what'd you pick up the, yeah, why don't you tell everybody what you oh, picked we up go. this week? I uh was given a copy of Magic Knight Ray Earth. Given. 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 Not like you didn't pay for it. It was just like, here you go. Have this game from my collection. Why don't you let everybody know what that game is valued at right now? Uh, anywhere between $800 and $2,000. <laughs> just like, here you go. 
And that wasn't it. You got a bunch of other stuff too. A bunch of Genesis yeah, games, a bunch of Sega there's Saturn nice, games. There's a nice box actually like less than four feet away from me. Yeah. I guess it pays to have friends. It does. It does. You've had offers on it already, you said? Yep, like, but that's, that's, that is the number two grail for Sega Saturn. Yeah, what's the number one? Is it that dragon one? Panzer, Panzer Dragon, dragon Saga. Saga. Yeah. yeah, buddy. If you get that, I'm coming over. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm legitimately <laughs> trying. I've, I've been hounding after that game my entire adult life. Every I'll time I so see bad. it, I'm just like, oh. I Every don't time know if I, I can see, commit, I've seen like one copy in person, and it was just it's like eight hundred dollars or whatever it was. It was you know absurd. That's well, that's always been my problem with Saturn games is like if they aren't nice, crisp, and white, mm-hmm. like because they just look ugly if they're faded and water damaged. Mm-hmm. You you know what really looks ugly, guys? The PlayStation mm-hmm. Five. I will a wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> I, I love the controller is beautiful. That is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen on my energy. It's it's like I'm um, distractingly ugly. Yeah. And obviously I'll get used to it eventually, but it is unbelievable how ugly that console is. Are you standing it up or laying it on its side? It's on its side. I have it on its side as well, which to it's me is less hideous. distracting. No, I think it's less distracting than when it's got those two antenna at the top. It, well, it makes no sense on the side because the disk drive is on the bottom. Yeah. It's the it's mind numbing that that would be the decision you make because it just vibrates against whatever the surface is right o- right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it would look better vertically. But then it looks like it has the pop collar. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Then it just looks like a looks like an oversized internet modem. Yes. Um, I will flat out tell you, my wife hates that thing so much it is banned. I want to throw a blanket over it. And then it'll overheat. <laughs> <laughs> um no she she actually specifically said like if that's gonna stay up here it has to go inside the tv console somehow she's like i refuse to look at that thing i respect it i respect the call <laughs> yeah it's it's bad enough that she was like i'm okay with the giant black brick sitting there that thing no you know, the series in. x doesn't look amazing but at least it can kind of square away and it's dark yeah. you know it, well it blends in with the background it's just oh look it's a giant black void yeah uh, well, anyway as, as for me yeah that was an awkward pause uh as for me i uh i finally beat guardians of the galaxy this finally. past week Uga yeah. chaka. i did not uh do it in time to do the spoiler cast with you guys unfortunately but uh, we had some fun chat uh over text about the differences that we had so did you give it up did they play rick astley in your your finale I don't remember. Um, I thought it was a no, it New Kids you, on the Block Well, song. you you got Rick Astley and the New Kids on the Block song, which is exactly what I got. Yeah. But when it goes into that scene, it plays that. Zach didn't get... Uh, right. He didn't get Rickrolled. Now, did oh. you... Did, uh, I guess I, know, right? I, can't, I can't ask the question I was going to ask. Yeah. How about this? In, now that you've beaten it, would it change placement on your Game of the Year list, even though it's too late? No. It would okay. have probably been right where it's at. Okay. I mean, the storytelling was really great, but I felt like the, I still think the game was longer than I wanted it to be. It was it dragged out for me at the end. That the the gameplay started, especially once you get all the powers, they're they're fun to use. But you know, when once there was nothing new to do, uh, yeah. other than like uh, you know revive, I guess was the big one that you got at the very end, where you could get yourself revived or revive a teammate automatically with Groot. Uh, it just kind of all started coming together. Well, doesn't doesn't uh. uh... It would yeah depends on the order you unlock them right, or is that his yeah. oh is there, is that his ultimate that's his, his ultimate, his ultimate. Oh, okay. yeah yeah yeah. Um, the thing that I found the most helpful, by the way, because you know how you started getting those um, like Captain Planet powers, you know, Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, like all those, you know, uh, the Wind one. I was just using that like more than anything, where you could just like grab a guy, bring him to you, and then melee him down. I was using that almost exclusively unless it was something that needed a like, like those real heavy bots at the end needed needed a fire to take down and all that. Yeah. Lightning for days, bro. Yeah. I feel like I tried not to use them. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I was I was always like sw- swapping them around for whatever one I needed for what situation. Well, I mean, you really have to in some situations, but I don't know. Right. I like the I like just uh being the commander of the battlefield. It was it was a good time. Also, uh, Zach, you'd probably be proud. I dipped my toe into Halo Infinite multiplayer. Ooh, reporting for duty. Week. 
Uh, I was supposed to meet up with uh, Joel and um, uh, CJ and Christina to play some Borderlands, but uh, one of my team got sick and had to bow out, so I wound up with the other two playing. Uh, we, we didn't want to play Borderlands because we didn't want to leave our one teammate hanging and you know be higher leveled and stuff. I know it would have been fine. I wasn't going to argue. Um, so uh, I had Halo Infinite you know, already installed and gave it a shot and lasted about four rounds before I said, no, thank you. I'm done. Oh, yeah? I, <laughs> I granted, I think that uh, CJ put it on a mode that like was not for beginners by any what means. Was it, what was the mode? If he, or... I mean, it was, it was, uh, was it Slayer? Is that, or what's it called? It was, like just <laughs> most deaths the or whatever. Get yeah. wrecked scrub. Team Slayer. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it was, we played it in a way where everybody had, where it was like headshots were, were an instant kill, and we had the assault rifle oh, with, that's, this, with the scope. Dude, that, that, that is not Halo. So, yeah, I did not. No, well, here, here's the really funny refuse, part. If you're out of Halo, I will say, you did not play Halo. You played the Call of Duty mode in Halo, and it sucks. Okay. Which is funny, because um, Joel didn't like it either. But he said, "But he said he's a Call of Duty guy, more than a Halo oh, that's, guy." Well, that's fascinating. So I could funny you say that. I couldn't say and you, So what you played was Tactical Slayer. Yes, and Tactical that Slayer. Su it sucks. It, it doesn't even highlight Halo's combat, which is the shields and everything, and right how you can turn things around. Yeah, that's that's really that's a really dumb way to have somebody play first. No offense, CJ. Yeah. Well, the funny thing, no, that's not the first thing he did. The first thing he did was drop us into a regular Slayer match. And dude, I was I was getting kills left and right. I'm like, this is awesome. Zach was right. I'm I'm great at this. He didn't tell me purposely that we were playing against bots. I it's like I, uh, we got halfway through the match and I was like, wait, this has got a pretty generic name. Are we playing against bots? And he's like, yeah, I wasn't gonna tell you. I wanted you to feel good about yourself for a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. But uh, after that, I just uh, I had also had a rough week, as I alluded to earlier. It was a, it was a pretty rough week at uh, work. And some other stuff going on, and uh, I was really bummed because I wanted to play Borderlands, and uh -huh. I had just been looking forward to Borderlands all week, and that didn't work out. So I was just kind of just not into it. So I need to give it another shot, but I just wanted you to know I at least tried it. Yeah, we're gonna you and I are gonna link up. We're play some Halo. I don't think you want me as a partner, man. <laughs> like, That's I'm fine. Really... You can drag my numbers. I don't care. I just don't want to. I don't want to ruin your KD. Or what is it? Your, KDR. Yeah, your KDR. Only game ever KDR went KDR with was Gears 2. Okay. Fair and enough. it was it was pretty high KDR. I just want to say that. <laughs> That's I would love to go back and do some gears with you, man. We yeah. there was a there was a while there where our squad was good. Yeah. We had you, I'm, me, and Bomb. Bomb was a great teammate. Um Kibashi. Kibashi. And man, just you want to talk about some fun conversations. Brian, Brian um, could or could not be. Yeah, Brian was hit or miss. I was I was more missed. Not than that he it. wasn't good. He was good. He just uh, would get in a mood where he wanted to f around and ruin everything. Yeah. <laughs> CB, I'm sorry, you're trying to say something. No, no, I can honestly say though that is one multiplayer I'm always down for. Yeah, there we go. I love Gears. Are the Gears two servers still up, or will we be playing Gears five in this scenario? Gears five, I'm fine with. Yeah, I, I mean, I just had, I didn't really touch the multiplayer on that one. Uh, I haven't either. You played uh, a little bit with me, Scott. And oh yeah, got, one night. You got absolutely slaughtered. Yeah, I yeah. got I got pretty angry that night, if I remember correctly. Yeah, <laughs> Scott's like, "How are you getting kills?" And I'm like, "Cause I'm playing Gears. How I play everything. Yeah, Give I me play the shotgun and go. I you know I play sniper. I try to hit, stay back and keep myself safe, and then it never works well for me. But I feel like uh, the, my problem with the Coalition's multiplayer is that it was very shotgun centric. And the, yeah. the Nasher was always, you know, the, a very powerful weapon, but I feel like Gears 4 and Gears 5, it was, like, you may, you may as well not use anything else. Back, meanwhile, back in, like, the Gears 2 days, the Nasher was hit or miss because you had to be the perfect distance away in order right. for it to be super effective, right? It's, but I think it's just because with all the, the more modern maps, it's a lot tighter mm -hmm. and not as open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it definitely does kind of force you to be like, okay, shotguns and go. Yeah, when I think, I remember Rod Ferguson saying at the start of Gears 5 that they decided to stop fighting against the Nasher's popularity and try to lean into it. And then I, I remember that did not work for me. Yeah. Still, we should do that. That'd be an easy community game night, too. 
Yeah. Can you can you do like a group where like we we play us versus? Can you do eight in a lobby and just do us? Well, they, I love how we're this inside baseball, everybody. Yeah. But they have that they have that Hive Busters expansion, which is three players against AI, and you like have to escape in certain amounts of time right. and stuff. Yeah, we could do that. That even has story a storyline to it. I know, but I just I just want like four on four, like just with people we know instead of playing against strangers. I just think that would be fun. I think there's a way to do it. We'd have to we'd have to either get super lucky or set up a private room or so, I don't know. Anyway, so let's look into it. Hard, so. Well, that was oh, that's why Gears was so brilliant because you stayed in the match, right? Yeah, and that's how you met people and made friends and stuff because you that's didn't how we made friends. No, I know. I was just I'm sorry. I just had like a revelation, like epiphany to my past. Yeah, that is that's why Gears was so fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nobody else does that. Like you always just go to I mean, another map right. Gears away. doesn't do it anymore. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but that really is what made it so successful. I agree. Well, we'll have to plan that up. Stay uh, tuned for that in the future, because I know some of the community on Discord has been saying we need to do another impromptu game night, and there's plenty of games for us to play, so let's do that. But in the meantime, let's jump into the week's news. All right, so it looks like GoldenEye might be coming to Xbox. I'm sure we'll be talking about that. Ubisoft Plus is also coming to Xbox. The PlayStation VR 2 was revealed, and we got some more information on the Fallout TV series. Uh, let's see, CB, which story would you like to talk about? I'm sure you already know. I would assume it's Fallout. Yeah. No, you'd be v- wrong. VR? Really? Yeah, VR all day, bro. Do you not know okay. this guy? Oh, There's a lot of stories here. There's Xbox, there's Xbox, there's <laughs> VR, and there's Fallout. Like, like that's it's, all. It's a, it's a, it's a week for me. Yeah, pretty much. So, which, which two stories would you like to talk about this week, CB? Well, for, first, let's let's get the VR out of the way. Okay. Damn, I'm excited. Okay, I was curious because of the cord. I'm okay. I I will say I my my VR experience over the last like oh I don't know two years has been cordless. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they've simplified it using only one cord, I'm right. okay with. Um, you don't have to use the camera anymore. The, the PS, uh, even on PS4 Pro, is such a nightmare to set up. Yeah, yeah like if you don't have like that memorized what goes where, it almost made it not worth it. If you don't have it like already hooked up, that's why I Oops. use it two nights, and I was like, I cannot go through this again. Yeah, well, especially if you have the Gen One versus the Gen Two. Mm-hmm. Because the Gen 1 has two additional cords. Well, why don't you run down what the PSVR 2 is and then share your okay. thoughts on it. So, first off, only available on PS5. Mm-hmm. No surprise. Uh, new VR controllers. And wouldn't you know it, they listen to the fans. How so? Congrats, Sony. You did something right. They have thumbsticks on both the controllers. Mm-hmm. Well, since they're not Thank- using PS3 wands anymore. Yeah. Thank like they finally updated those. Like that that was my biggest drawback with uh, the PS4. I mean the first PSVR was you had no thumbsticks on the the wand. So I'm like, okay, finally that's gonna be a nice upgrade. And they're haptic, so big big bonus there. Uh new visuals. So instead of the subpar ten eighty, like they're they're getting better. Right. So uh, I think it's like 2000 by 2040 is the resolution rate with 110 degree field. Now, like, clarify this for me because I keep seeing like 4K VR. That is not 4K. Okay. That didn't make sense to me. It's, it's like just under. Okay. But it's pretty close. Well, maybe if you put yeah. both lenses together, then. <laughs> oh, kind of like God. So now, to, like, two Atari two uh, Jaguar 64 yeah. bits, bro. No, not man. really um but yeah like just it seems like everything's moving right for this and for like a new version of an entry level vr setup i'm excited but it's still gonna have that mountain to climb against like an oculus quest or the uh the vive pro like anything that is not wired right so, but it's well, got nah. that PlayStation branding on it that will well, attract a lot of people well, that haven't touched the, it. The other mountain to climb is the fact that you need a PS5 for it. <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, 
you know, because because outside of the cost of the headset, which I assume is going to be quite high since they didn't reveal it along with the unit, which is never a good sign. Two hundred bucks. No, no, way. I, no, no way. There's no way. No, the, uh, because because if it was two hundred, if it was two hundred dollars, they would tell you right now. Yep. It'll it'll be between I it'll be between two hundred and three hundred dollars. I, I, I almost was got four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars is what I think nope, it'll be. Won't sell. I agree, but that's what they're going to charge. That's what they're going to charge because it's <laughs> because the resolution is better than. The but, Oculus <laughs> Quest Three has actual four K. I didn't and know that's the three be, was out. CB, it's I don't know not, if you've been looking at the business decisions of PlayStation over the last year or so. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to hold hope <laughs> on one thing and one thing only. Like you're selling a peripheral. Right, like, but they're going to see it as a unit. Uh, they can see that's what they want, but I if know. they if they price it at four hundred dollars plus, it won't sell. It'll be I dead. Agree. I agree with you. Yep. That's what they're going to charge though. It'll it'll be dead faster than Connect. This company is charging one hundred twenty dollars for memory cards. <laughs> Man makes a point. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm just I'm trying to hold out hope because if they price this thing anything above, like three. F- like 300 plus it's it's going to be dead before it even gets off the ground it won't matter what games they put on it it'll be dead now i am i am happy that you say that the core is not that big of a deal to you because when i saw the core i was like oh man i don't think the vr community is gonna like that because once you go cordless it's hard to imagine going back to the cord Mm -hmm. it is hard but like having a single cord especially if you rig up onto the ceiling who's gonna rig it up come on i would you it's would, actually yes. not that hard. I understand it's not that hard, but your your typical, you know, consumer is not going to go buy a one dollar command strip. They're not going to do, do it. They're not going to. But do hey, it. how cool is it that they're finally putting one of their meaningful IPs behind it instead of Until Dawn? Yeah, <laughs> um, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's like the only thing that they've announced for it. Well, and to be clear, this is not just a VR version of Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a standalone game set in that universe, playing where you're playing as a new character. Correct? Yes, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so already you're losing part of your fan base. Well, no, you're getting it. We talking? That's more exciting. I don't want to play as Aloy. Eh. Oh no, because because you have Aloy in the main main line, and then because this is also smart because then you introduce a playable character here. Now you can go have a comic with a different character. Now you're building a universe. You're doing an animated show. This is well, this is just smart from that perspective. But also, I think it's more exciting to to play but somebody for, else. But for your first big VR title, like I think you need to either stick with something or create something entirely new. No, I I think this is the right call. Mm. I think it would have been a smarter call to have released this before Horizon Forbidden West. So that you can play as this character and then meet that character somewhere in the game. Well, I mean, conversely, maybe we'll meet them in Forbidden West. But we'll I, see. We'll meet that character first, because right? Because right? that game comes out in what a couple oh, months, and then maybe you'll like them, and you'll be like, "Oh, now I'm stoked to play as them in there the VR go. game." So maybe it is smarter this way. Well, I. We'll, we'll see. I'm just hoping that it comes at the right price point, and I'm hoping the other rumor about it is true. So what's what's the what's too much for you to to not pick this up, CB? Oh, I'll, I'll pick it up regardless. I'm saying for, I, I, dude, I'm a VR fanboy. Oh, I know, um, yeah. But I'm saying for the mass populace, mm-hmm. if you price it too high, it's it's not going to sell. I agree with you. I'm just saying that that, but Sony is still going to slap four hundred dollars on that. They didn't slap four hundred dollars on the first one. I have to go back and look. It was two ninety nine ninety nine. I don't know if that, I don't remember, man. I don't know. I bought I don't it day remember one. being that cheap. I bought, bought it day one. Okay. So even even um, even if you're right, even if it was two ninety nine when it launched, it was a very different Sony. That is true, but it was also something that uh, they were first gambling on. So, PlayStation VR's introductory price was three hundred ninety nine dollars. I did not pay three hundred ninety nine dollars. I it. believe you. That's this is what. That is what it was announced as. <laughs> That's what it's announced, but I I know for a fact because I still have the receipt in the box. I'm just Mar- I'm just I'm just letting you know what the He's PlayStation blog says. Re- He's gonna go get I will. the receipt I right go now. Get that receipt. I don't believe, um, I don't I don't doubt you. I don't I'm not calling in a question your story. <laughs> uh, I, I picked I it up say, at Kohl's for a hundred ninety nine dollars. 
So I, yeah. I understand. I did not. I did not pay four hundred. I get it. Well, with this announcement, did you see the other rumored announcement that came with it? No. Oh boy. Sony's been in talk with Valve. Okay. Half Life Alex. According to rumors, there's no way. Uh, no, I could believe it. I just, I don't. That's it all. would not be I the hope. first time that Valve has put their products on a console. No, you're absolutely correct. But I also so, remember Steam was coming to PS3. That was announced. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, different Sony. So. Yeah. Anyway, I think uh, I'm I'm glad that you're such a VR fanboy, CB, because now I can try out the PS VR2 without <laughs> having to pay for it. So that's a yeah. win for me. Say, Especially be... if Half Life Alex comes, because I need to see what everybody's talking about with that game. Yeah, if Half Life Alex comes to PSVR two, I would probably pick one up. Oh wow! I... Or because right now I'm like fifty fifty, but like it's got to have that Horizon's just not a brand I care enough about, you know. Again, I just said that I'm like Horizon no, I... isn't big enough. No, I for me, but PlayStation people love it, right? It sold it sold tens of millions of copies. Like it's it's not it's no joke of a game. But for me, I don't, I don't care about it because the combat was so bad. If they announced that Half Life Alex was like bundled in with it, that would be huge. Yes, absolutely, it would sell like yeah. gangbusters. Yeah, for four hundred dollars. Because not yep. only is it supposed to be this revolutionary <laughs> VR game, but it continues the story of Half Life Two. Finally, right? Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying like even at four hundred dollars, if it was announced that it came with Half Life Alex, people would pay that. Yes, I think you're correct. So anyway, all right, we jump let's go this. on, Zach. What story do you want to talk about? Well, you know, while we hop in, away, let's hop away from the Steam rumors here, Valve rumors, get something a little more credible. I think with the uh, Golden Eye coming to Xbox. Hell yes! yes. So, I, somebody screwed up on that one. Well, the achievements, yes, pretty makes it pretty clear that this is going to happen. Although you'll remember, uh, there there was leaked footage of a Golden Eye remake many years ago that was supposed to come to. I want to say. Three six maybe I think it was, it was three sixty. Yeah, three sixty. You're right because then they it did, did that come weird. Out. They, no, they no, put no, 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 no. It was a different one. No, it no, was a different one. It was a yeah. It was a the Daniel Craig one came about because I believe Nintendo was the holdout that wasn't letting because they have a share of the rights of the Golden Eye Double Seven game. Oh, okay. And Rare inside of Microsoft prototype this remake that did leak. TB remembers, uh, and Nintendo just didn't approve. But now Xbox and Nintendo have this this relationship. Which is makes this very possible because Rare was already cooking this up before. The achievements are leaked. The Xbox and Nintendo are buddies. I think it would be brilliant if you released this on Xbox and Switch and you made them cross platform. Because mm-hmm. then it just makes you know you just you cut Sony out basically, and you kind of make them look a little bad for this. I mean, th- this very important game in history. My only my only qualm is, do you have to relicense Pierce Brosnan? Uh, I don't think so. Or do, or is it, or does Eon own Pierce Brosnan's face as Bond in Goldeneye? That's probably what, that's, that's probably pretty assume. sure yeah, they right. do. But if they're gonna do like any type of remake for this, they're gonna fix some of those graphics. Yeah, no, I just well, I, you know, Pierce Brosnan is my Bond, right? So I'm just excited to see him again. Hey, me too. Oh, he's so suave. Wrong I, Bond. I, I love Brosnan. I, he's my yeah, he's my favorite Bond for sure. I just like the idea because uh, we we did a was it a break the seal or was it a retro reminisce where we went back and played a retro like uh, a, outsider? It was like a retro outsider. It was it was a little bit of both. We, we went back and played Goldeneye, and I, I've I remember how revolutionary those graphics were with or not graphics but controls were with an N sixty four controller because that was before you know strafing was a thing. We didn't have two sticks, and that was the first time when I could like run sideways, and I was like, this is amazing. This is gonna you know. That's awesome, but now to be able to do that with two sticks and get some achievements, I, I right. want to go through and play those levels again, man. I, I I had a blast with Goldeneye back in the day. I guarantee you, this this game is going to play a lot faster. Yeah, I was going to say it's I, it's almost going to be weird playing Goldeneye without the, all the slowdown. Mm-hmm. The frame the frame rate drops for like part of the experience where you just like right. stack a bunch of remote mines and explode, and it takes like three minutes for the game to catch up to the explosions. Right, right. That is, oh, the right if you there. But remem- and, and if you remember, Turok and Turok 2 came to Xbox. Right. And those played like butter, man. Like, I, I went back and replayed the entire first game, and I was shocked at how well that game held up. But that game also, your character ran a lot faster than, than Bond did in uh, GoldenEye. Yeah. But 
I wonder. I wonder if they do online multiplayer for the for the multiplayer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, if you do online well, and you do cross cross platform between I, Xbox I and know. Switch, I I think cross play would be a disaster with Nintendo's online infrastructure. What the, a lot of games are cross play. <laughs> Nintendo, what are you talking about? Right, but every, everyone I hear, I've never experienced it. Just everyone that I hear that try it says anything with online is just like just go play it on Xbox oh, I, or I don't know, PlayStation I've, I've, or whatever. Huh, I don't know, like Dead by Daylight, like it tells you when people are on Switch or they never really had a problem. Okay. I, again, I, I haven't experienced it. I'm just going by what I've heard. Okay, yeah, no. My circles are probably smaller. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. We are going to do some GoldenEye multiplayer. Yeah, what a, what 100%. I, like, no odd it. job. Imagine, Nobody's... imagine if it was on Game Pass. Right? <laughs> uh, rare. No, I, I understand that, but I don't know, with the Nintendo and the and the Eon license, I don't know if you feel like you need to charge or whatever. Was it Rare Replay on Game Pass for a while? No, it is, yeah. It's, or yeah. still is? Yeah, uh, so they, they rotate some of the games, because the Rare Replay was a collection of, like, all the games. Right. Right, my, my only but, hold up with this is, you know, I don't know what be the Bond licensors will want, because maybe they'll be like, no, you are absolutely yeah. not giving this away for free. Right. If we're going right. to okay this, you will be charging nineteen ninety nine per copy, you know. Sold. Or, <laughs> yeah, or they're yeah. gonna bundle it in with like a rare replay too. It, or it'll come with like Agent Under Fire, some Nintendo game you don't care about. Or some Bond like game you don't Agent care about. Fire. No, it's I mean it's good, but like nobody's nostalgic for Agent Under Fire. What 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 like thirty bucks for Agent Under Fire and Goldeneye? All right. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh man, everything or nothing. What uh, so- but see, you could bundle it with like other games like Bloodstone I right? like from that. the 360. Yeah, I didn't I, mind it. I liked it a lot. It was it was not Everything or Nothing, which is of course the best Bond game. I don't think I played that one. That's it's it's a fifth Pierce Brosnan Bond movie, man. I don't because think I played it. EA got the license. They had hired in. They came with screenplays. Willem Dafoe is the villain. Oh, Shane Elizabeth. Shane Elizabeth is the Bond girl. It's it's a real production. Okay. Break you got to stretch faces yeah, and everything. Gotta, oh, you got to play that, man. I, that you, game's awesome. Do you own that one, CB? Yes, it's GameCube. I have an entire GameCube yeah. set. GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, man. Okay, let's make that happen. Oh, yeah. For sure. Wouldn't be that hard. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, Ubisoft Plus, which is officially coming to Xbox. And the reason I, w- I bring this one up is because I have a correction to make. Because when I posted this story initially on uh, social media, I, in error said that Ubisoft Plus was going to be part of Game Pass, and that is not correct. Um, What is coming to Game Pass is Rainbow Six Extraction, which is going to be included on Game Pass on day one, which uh, still doesn't make me want to play it. Uh, (laughs) That's that's probably coming to Game Pass day one because nobody's buying it. Yeah. If they gave Uh, me $15, I would not play it. (laughs) But still, Ubisoft Plus is a service that uh, you will be able to subscribe to uh, which will include over 100 Ubisoft games and pieces of DLC content, uh, but again, will not be included with Game Pass. You will have to pay a subscription for that, but still, that's uh, it's pretty cool that it will be available on Xbox. I mean, man. I want to know how far they go back. <laughs> yeah, because what were some of the early Ubisoft games, like really oh, early ones? The Indiana Jones! Yeah. On the original Nintendo. Something tells me that's going to be there. No, nah, I don't think that'll be there either. Um... Ubisoft also made all the really crappy shovelware on the DS. Oh, man. Right. Can't wait for all the Rabbids games. <laughs> Ubisoft Replay? Does, do we know... I, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys don't know. I'll give you a pass. But does Ubisoft Plus include their new, new games? Uh, I believe in the initial tweet it said, but the initial tweet was deleted because the initial tweet also yes. made the same mistake Scott did. I would say a lot, a lot, a lot bigger sites than us uh, got the wrong information on this one as well. Oh, okay, so it, I did read it that way. Yeah, then. you did read it correctly. The initial tweet was that it was co- it was Ubisoft Plus coming to Game Pass, and they're like, oh, scratch, delete. Ubisoft is coming to Xbox. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better because... You know, sometimes I get this stuff when I'm at work and I try I want to get it out there as quickly as possible to be like ahead of, you know, whatever. And then I just thought I misread that one, but I was too quick on the draw on that. Are one, you so. are you too curious as Ubisoft fans in Ubisoft Plus? No, uh, I <laughs> honestly might pick it up just because Why? I well, I want to see the game list. 
Well, well you, you can, can see the game list without paying for the subscription. But there's also a couple like Ubisoft titles that I didn't uh, finish, and I wouldn't mind going back and finishing. Like what? Uh, believe it or not, I did not play the original Assassin's Creed on Xbox. Dude, you can get that for like ten bucks. I know. You have it, don't you? Uh, surprisingly, no, I don't. I can't find a copy of it because no one has it. That's got to be really easy to find. That's got. You know what? I haven't seen a. I I don't remember the last time I saw a physical copy of Assassin's Creed. Exactly. So. Like the, there are three sixty games that are hard to find. I think I have a. I think I might have a collector's just on that CBL. Just mail it to you. <gasps> oh my god. I don't. I don't. Does care it have about the it. little Altair statue what? still? Yeah, but his foot was broken when I picked it up. Which is a problem. Well, in, which is a problem in a lot of them. Um, yeah, because the the plastic that it came in, like when you popped him out, it snapped the foot off. What, and I don't know if you remember, like all the promo images, sure made that statue a whole lot bigger looking than it was. Oh yeah, but it's only like a couple inches tall. <laughs> yeah, it's like three inches. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but for so, me, like I have so many Ubisoft games that I haven't got through yet. Far Cry Six, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, you know, all right. I don't need a subscription for the games that I already own. Uh, I'll, I'll finish those first and then and then see where it lands. Yeah, obviously I don't play their games, so I'm not gonna get you know, not for me. But man, there's just so many streaming services. I'm I'm losing it. That, that's what it's going to. It's yeah. a la carte gaming. Remember when we were like just to kind of switch it to the TV side for a minute when we were like ah oh, paying so much for cable. I wish I could just like a la carte this, and now we have that, and we're all like ugh. I have so many things I subscribe to. So we just start doing the share game. <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone does. Absolutely. Yeah, pretty much. Only some services catch on and they know your location and it doesn't work. But uh, All right, yeah, live TV point, you can't so. do it, but oh well. That's why you make friends and you share different ones. I think that's literally what we just said, CB. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a delay sometimes. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> delay? It's like a uh, half a second delay. Anyway. Well, no, the delay's in his no, it's head. A, it's a brain delay. Yeah, it's oh, processing, brain delay. That processing sense, delay. Gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, we there's not much to say about the Fallout television show, otherwise, other than that it's going to uh, start production in 2022, so this year it's going to start. Uh, excited about that. And Jonathan Nolan will be directing the first episode. If that name sounds familiar, he was the co-creator of Westworld, which had an incredible first season. Right. Um, so the very we can probably assume that the first season will be decent. There you go. I, I mean, just want to know which storyline they're going to follow. That's I want I them about. to do what I wanted the Mandalorian to be, just like a show of side quests. Yeah, yeah. Give me that. I don't need the you know. I don't need him to find Liam Neeson in the Fallout show. No, what I want them to do is like the first episode introduce that, yeah. and then have the character be distracted by side quests and just never gets <laughs> to the main story. Oh yeah, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be well, super? They could be, they could do the uh, in the first fall game. If you took too long, you had to get a, a water filter for your for your vault. Mm -hmm. And if you took too long, they would all just die. So if you did too many side quests, they would all just die of thirst back in your vault. Wouldn't that See? be like a crazy like like season finale? That's what I'm saying, man. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, I think David Dude. Newman on Discord said that is this is the television show going to have random glitches in it. <laughs> and I, I think the response I said was there needs to be like one random plant that just appears through a desk somewhere, just like not even like just kind of in the background. Like I just want that one shot in in the background of some weird glitch like that. I want the I want I mean, the Bethesda face zoom at some point. Oh jeez! All of a sudden, you see their eyeballs from the inside. Yeah. <laughs> when someone has a conversation, they just stop and turn and face. <laughs> Just the episode just ends 20 minutes into its 60 minute runtime, and you're like, what happened? And you're like, oh, it just crashed this week. <laughs> do, we, do we know, like, it, have they released anything, like, when it's going to be? Or like, No, I mean, if, the, if production hasn't even started, how can they possibly say when it's going to? Yeah, you assume well, tail, I mean, tail some, end of this year, or early next year, probably? Well, no, 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 I meant, like, time frame in the universe of Fallout. Oh, I oh, thought you meant no. for release. I don't think no. we have any. I don't think we have any deets yet. I hope it's a whole just standalone, like it, like it's a new thing. Like it's not in it's not DC, in like, it's not in okay. Vegas, it's not in um, Pittsburgh. Chicago. That'd be Chicago cool. would be pretty cool. What was the last game that took place in Chicago? Uh, Watch Dogs. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Chicago would be pretty cool. There's got to be some well, history think, there. 
it would be cool if one of these shows wasn't an adaptation, but rather slit like slots into the lore. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. I like it. That's what I hope the Halo show does. That'd be smart. Yeah, I'm gonna have to subscribe to Paramount Plus. <laughs> just, no, well, no, you but don't. That's, that's the thing. No, you just okay. wait for the, wait for the season to wrap up, buy a month, watch the show, move on. Yeah, but FOMO is a thing. Yeah, it really is. Well, Sucks. luckily somebody else already subscribes to it. So. All right, solid. Yeah, well, I'll be in on that group chat. <laughs> hey, man, Star, Star Trek Disco. Star, is that oh, what it's yeah. called? Oh, Discovery. Star Trek Discovery. I thought you were Star Trek Disco. New, I thought you were telling me a new show that hadn't uh, that I hadn't heard of yet. Star Trek I'm a Disco. Huge Trek, I'm a huge Trek fan, so on Paramount Plus, all the uh, different Star Treks right. are on there. Next Generation. That's where I was watching TNG. I would like to go back and watch that again sometime. But anyway, I want to move on and remind everybody that we are an independently funded podcast, which means that we do pay for our podcast hosting services website and all that on our own. Well, that's not true. We do it with help from our awesome community uh, through our Patreon page, where fans can contribute money monthly to offset those costs of production, as well as allow us to give back to the community. If you'd like to help us out, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the GoCast. And we have some new episodes available because at the $3 tier, you get one bonus episode each month. And at the $5 tier, you get two bonus episodes each and every month. CB, what can people listen to now? Oh, you know, some stuff and some things. Uh, But uh, our Break the Seal on Star Fox is Star Fox 64. Uh, Our little review of some video game movies, uh, Resident Evil, uh, Raccoon City, and 8-Bit Christmas. And Zach's, Zach and my take on uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Mm-hmm. And then I know we're also doing a uh, Break the Seal for Halo with Christina because she has been powering through. Yeah, she's gone through Halo 1 through 5 in, I want to say, a month. <laughs> like, she's gone did through she, all those games. Did she play ODST? No. Did she play Reach? Uh, Reach, I think, would be, the, would be the more important one to play. Yeah, Re- mm. No, ODST. Oh. In terms oh, of story. God. In terms sure, of story. yeah, but ODST is such a oh, what a, what ODST a ODST uh, is great, great experiment reach, in bro. short story video game, te- you know, video game short storytelling. Oh, good stuff. Actually, she she needs to play Halo Wars and Halo Wars Two. No. Well, yeah, I was gonna say little do, little does she know how vital Halo Wars Two is to the narrative <laughs> of Halo Six. Yeah, true Man. story. And apparently, we need to do a bunch of uh, we need to do a break the seal on Bloodstone, right? Uh, everything or nothing. Everything or nothing. Sorry. Yeah. Bond don't, games. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Can't keep them straight. <laughs> uh, we got some other things cooking. If you guys have some other ideas, I actually was contacted by one of our community members with some ideas uh, for Patreon episodes that he'd like to see. So keep firing them uh, our way, guys, especially if you are a patron. We'd like to hear from you to know what you guys would like to hear on those bonus episodes. Again, the website is patreon.com forward slash the go cast. And with that, let's move on to the newer games we've been playing. All right, Zach, anything exciting coming out that people can pick up this week? Maybe. Monster Hunter Rise comes off the Switch and onto the PC January 12th. Mushroom Wars 2 is an RTS game coming to Xbox One January 12th. Battle Brothers is a uh, PC RPG that released like six years ago, but it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One on January 13th. Uh, Astro Near, which is a uh, little co-op building survival-ish game coming to Switch January 13th. Uh, the Anacrusis, which is a co-op shooter, sci-fi co-op shooter, coming to Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, PC, January 14th. I, I'm going to guess this is kind of the big news where God of War, the 2018 Kratos Dad Simulator, coming to PC, January 14th. Uh, Operation Zeta makes its way to Xbox One and PC on January 14th, not to be confused with Mothership Zeta, the Fallout 3 DLC. Mm-hmm. And then Airy Dreamscape allows you to play as a little birdie on Xbox One and PC January 14th. Shout out to the excellent DLC of Fallout 3, let me tell you. Mm, yes. Was good. Even the pit was pretty good. They were all great. I all, wish... all the Fallout 3 DLCs were great. I feel like season passes and DLCs don't operate like that anymore, where it's just, you know, here's a three hour story, and then here we'll give you another one in a couple months. I kind of miss that. Me too. Now it's all about, you know, Here's our content roadmap, and here's a go kill this NPC for 12 XP. Oh, yeah, I remember when, uh, was it Odyssey? Assassin's Creed Odyssey that did that? Or was it Origins? 
where you had to go, like go fight all those gods. Oh, it was, well, yeah, yeah, but I think or- War- Origins was the gods. Odyssey was the uh, like monsters. Oh, okay. But I think Origins is the one where they did it, where it was like weekly or whatever, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did that one time, exactly one time, <laughs> and that was that was good. Well, now let's let's get off this tangent and back onto the topic. Is there any game here that's calling your guys' name? Nope. All right. I might check out the Anacrusis. Yeah. Just to be like, how good? I mean, well, how good or how crappy can Left for Dead in space with a '60s vibe be? Well, even Back for Blood couldn't do Left for Dead, so yeah, just uh, shows you how much Valve carried that. I think it's. I was gonna say, dude, who knew that Valve was a secret Left for Dead sauce? Uh, God of War is intriguing. That is coming to PC, of course. PlayStation fans on the internet in my circles are losing their absolute minds, and it's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> was, I saw videos of people like destroying their PS4s and it's stuff because embarrassing. And I, I get it because this is of all the exclusives to move. This does feel the most sensitive, right? Like important to the PlayStation audience. But I don't understand why you get mad about a game you played four years ago mm-hmm. coming to a different console. Yeah. Well, I almost feel like PlayStation's just kind of forgetting about God of War and moving on to Horizon. Well, I they got to focus on Horizon before they get God of War Ragnarok out, right? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm also going to skip everything. I was looking through the month of January releases, and I think I'm pre- I think I'm actually pretty good on releases until mid February. Oh yeah, which uh, I am okay with. Yeah, oh, I yeah. got plenty to catch up on, man. I was going to say I got plenty to catch up on. Although I did just remember, I think Sifu comes out February eighth, and I will play that. Sifu, remind me what that is. Uh, so one that looks like a Daredevil hallway fights game. Oh, I remember. We yeah. we die in you age. Yeah. So you guys play Ember? Or did you see me play Ember? What's going on with Ember? We it's both did. Uh, we didn't. Pl- we didn't play it together. I played it with Nate, and then CB no, played it with bailed. Nate. Yeah. And I played with Christina too. It's kind of weird. Oh yeah, Christina Nate's... was on too. I think my internet died. Nate's I, I got booted off my internet, and then I got frustrated and just didn't get back on. So but. this is a co-op shooter, but instead of shooting, you're spraying a fire hose. Is that right? Amongst it, other things. Amongst other things, yeah. It, uh, it, it sounds simplistic, but once you jump into it, uh, it's, it's 3D, right? It's like a 3D shooter. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have an objective to not only fight the fire, because you can't really kill the fire. It's all about inhibiting the fire so that you can complete other objectives to cooperatively... Uh, make as much money as possible as firefighters. Which, by the way, you play as like an old grandma, like an old grandma, like an old man. Yeah, like it's it's very very quirky. Um, but the but these tasks include things like rescuing the people that are trapped in the house. So you have to find where they are, get enough of the fire at base so that you can rescue the person, get them back outside. Uh, once you rescue all the people, then it's about like collecting their valuables. Um. <laughs> I don't know how far you got, see or how much you played, but like we there's... played for a while after did you? you got off. Because and we, so uh, you have a little bit of misinformation. You can put out the fire. Oh, you it's can. It's difficult. Okay. Um, we we played for a while. Uh, there are different game modes. We tried almost all of them. Okay. Uh, there's one where instead of being firefighters, you are destroying the house. Oh, that sounds was... way more fun. <laughs> oh, it was. And uh, because you're you're gaining money to buy stuff, um, the destruction path makes a lot more. Oh, really? Yeah. So by the end of it, we all had like full matching firefighter outfits. Um, there's a there's a delivery like em- Ember, like an Ember Eats delivery service that you can do, <laughs> like Uber. Yeah. Um, and those ones are more like puzzle based, so you actually have to find a way into the house. But uh, Scott will hate it because it's timed. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you have to not only find your way into through the house, but uh, you have to find like keys to unlock multiple levels, find the different people to deliver their packages. I, I'm uh, just confused why you're delivering, if you're delivering a package to somebody, why you're breaking into their house to get it to them. Well, it, it's like an apartment building, so you have to find the key to get into the apartment building. Uh, but there's well, also like trash that you have to burn and then put out. And remove old boxes. There's like all different types of object- objectives, and they're actually kind of fun. So, did you, did you uh, play the imposter mode at all? No, we d- we did not get to that one because uh, Nate and Christina both had 
I think we played for more than like two, almost three hours. Wow. So it's it's actually fun with a with a with the right group of people. I will say that. Mm -hmm. And this is Um, on Game Pass, by the way. You can play it for free or not free, but included with your subscription. There you go. I like that. I like the little Mm -hmm. touch there, Scott. Yeah. Um, I actually want to play more of it. Do you? Yeah, it's it's kind of cute and fun, uh, especially when you start getting to unlock. Uh, the game gets a little disturbing sometimes How when so? you accidentally um, don't save the people that you're trying to rescue, oh, and, and they turn into skeletons, and you can just run around <laughs> carrying their skeleton and throw it at people. That's one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, like, the, like the thing where you have to like leave either people or their belongings, it's like a safety area or whatever, but you can like chuck something from across the yard and land it in there, including the people. It's all like super comic. It's funny. Like, the, that's yeah, it's like, Nate, uh, like overshot mattresses. it and, sh- and shot it like over the fence into the neighbor's yard or something. Uh, it's just, it's really fun. Did you, in the, in the main like hub area where you're like setting up your mission, did you, did you make a basket? Yeah, I got the achievement. Yeah, there's an there's like a random basketball hoop, and you can pick up a basketball, and and it took us a while to actually get it in the hoop, but uh, you get an achievement for oh, that's cool. for making a basket. It's just, I, I I will give these guys credit because they actually did put some research into this, um, because they're like as you progress through the game, like there are different types of fire. Mm-hmm. So if you run if you find a grease fire and you spray it with the water you almost immediately burn the house down. Oh, wow. Okay. Because you... grease fires are spread with water. So do you like, go get some baking soda you, or something? You, um, so you can unlock like fire extinguishers ah, okay. and like spray them. You can get hazmat suits to like go through certain areas. There's a special type of extinguisher that you can only use for electrical fires. Mm, okay. So, I mean, they, they actually put some decent research into this and coming from somebody with a firefighting like background. Mm-hmm. I was actually kind of impressed that they put that much thought and detail into this game. And to be clear, too, there's more than just fighting the fire. Like there are there are parts where like the room may be elect- filled with electricity, and you have to find the switch to turn it off so that you can you can actually get across the room. Um, there, what else is there? Well, um, there's also parts where you have to connect the switches using water with yeah, electricity. Yep. Yeah. You also have to. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. You have to connect the water, make electricity. Like the building will actually start coming down. Like it's got like you know destructible environments. So if you don't get the upper floor cleared first, then you won't have access to the second floor eventually because it will fall in. Um, it's it's really oh there's poisonous gas, like yeah. that you have to like uh, you have to figure out how to route that gas out of the room like using air conditioning units or. Uh, opening a window and turning a fan on and stuff like it's just like little quirky things that you got to do it's not just running around with a hose um and that yeah like you said you can unlock in- interesting things too like little sprinklers and oh and the fact that you don't even get a hose you have a uh basically a super soaker yeah it's a giant suit and you can go go refill it in the sink at the house yeah. it's, I don't know, it's it's, it's cool. a very cute game it's a lot of fun especially if you're playing with friends i think yeah. i think anybody listening who would be into this i think is sold yeah yeah oh one last thing the thing that cracked me up is there are hidden money caches and you would think like oh it'd be like a case of money or something it's like a like a breaking bad stack of money like in a in a perfect square cube and you just pick it up and carry it like that <laughs> which oh is just... man you know what you could do guys you could take the sack of money throw it in the fire and then and, and then, joker it and then say and then say the famous line uh this town deserves a better classic criminal and i'm gonna give it to him Man. It was a great scene. Man, I would I scene. would probably do that a lot if we played together. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go rewatch that movie. Oh, it's so good. Ember. So. And by and to be clear, it is spelled E M B R if you were searching for it. Uh there's it's missing an E from the normal word. Like yeah. it's an app. There you go. Well, <laughs> well speak speaking of Game Pass stuff, uh Scott, you've been, uh, been playing the pedestrian. Yeah. I've had my eye on this one for a long time. It released on PC and playstation like a year ago and i never picked it up but always wanted to and so glad that it got on game pass all right well um i actually surprisingly like completely forgot about this game Mm -hmm. so kind of remind me how this one goes all right so 
imagine like a limbo style game, you know, where you're just a quirky little character that goes around and has to solve puzzles in a 2D environment. That makes you know, sense. When, some, I, okay. when I think of limbo, I think quirky. Well, l- let me rephrase. It's limbo in it's like it's light um, platforming. It's mostly about like solving the puzzle in each area before you move right. on to the next one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you play as the little, you know, you know, the guy on like street signs, the little faceless, yeah. just like a stick figure kind of, kind of deal that's on like street signs and, you know, right, tre- the pedo- no trespass pedestrian crossing. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, it, it, it's all about like trying just to get from A to B or in some cases you're, you're solving, you got like a little hub and spoke area and you have to go get one item from this puzzle and one area from this puzzle, one area from this puzzle and bring them all to this hub, this central location and use all those pieces together to solve a puzzle in the hub, which is all, it's just so much fun to, and it feels really cool. Um, but the, the way, you can tell this game was designed for PC because there are different panels on some of the levels, and it's all about dragging those panels and then drawing lines between doors to connect the dots to allow your character to go into the doors and up ladders and, and everything. But there's a certain rule set that you have to follow that you learn as you play it. Like once you connect a door to a door, you can never unconnect it again. Otherwise, your character starts back to the beginning again. Okay. Um, it is one of the most clever puzzle games I've played in a long time. It is, it is especially if you have Game Pass, seriously go check out the pedestrian. Uh, it, it, does the, it does the portal thing where you'll sit and stare at a puzzle for forever. And like, and, and you, like how do I figure this out? And then when it clicks, you just feel like the smartest person in the world. It doesn't feel like you broke it like Portal does. Some, you know how sometimes when, when you beat a level in Portal, you feel like you figured a weird way to do it that wasn't the way the designers designed it? And in fact, it was. Yeah. You don't have those moments in this one, but it's really great. But one of the really, my favorite parts of this game is just the stuff that's going on in the background. Did you get a chance to see the trailer? I was I was looking at it and like it looks kind of like cityscape or like the part that I saw. Yeah. Was there was like cityscape stuff going on in the background. So you're almost like the game is being played on the signs. Right. It's That's like it you're like, being yeah. playing on the signs or or uh, posters on the walls in a in a sewer or in the subway and then the world is just existing behind you. Which is insane and I Zach I think you'll appreciate this because there is so much detail put into what's going on in the background that you see for just one puzzle. And then you go and it's a completely different background. Like the fun of this game, it's almost like you're rewarded after you solve a puzzle just to see where it's going to take you next. That makes it super rewarding. Um, when, when you were talking about that, like I kind of had vibes of uh, the runner, like runner three. Okay. So as you're like going through each of the different sections like i kept getting so distracted because there was stuff going on in the background Mm -hmm. that was entertaining so i kind of want to play this now because i love those kind of games it's it's really clever man i I don't i don't want to even i'm I'm oversimplifying it by saying you disconnect the dots it really is some of the smartest puzzles i've seen in a long time in terms of there's only one way to do it there truly is it, it feels like there's only one way to do it because of the rules that they've done. Eventually, you'll come to some levels where you can't drag the pieces anywhere you want to. You're blocked by only, you have a limited amount of space that you can drag it to, which almost makes okay. it easier to solve a puzzle because then it limits your options, if, if that makes sense. Um, just, a, just a charming game, but it is, it's a head scratcher. I sat there and set my controller down and just stared at the screen, just going, okay, if I do this and do that, it's, it's very much a trial and error you know, you can you can experiment all you want, make mistakes, and start it again, and it's it's really great. Did you, did you ever play the little block game, um, like parking? Parking. They, they, it's it's like a little block game, and there's different cars, and you have to basically like, oh yeah yeah, yeah. move them around to get it out. Like it sounds like somebody took that kind of game and expanded it out to make this, in a way. Um, I think it's a, it's a little bit more than that. I know what you're talking about. It's kind of like a boxel type game, like one of the sliding puzzles, and you're just trying to yeah. get the car out. It's a little bit more complex than that because you have to hit a button to go back and forth between controlling the character himself, and then you press Y, 
and now you're like the overlord that can move the tiles and everything. And then you have to mash it again to go back to be able to control the character. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So the sliding isn't necessarily sliding. You actually have full movement that you can drag it to any place you want to. And um, it just feels so satisfying. But that, that's the mark of an awesome puzzle game for me. When, when you complete a level and it just feels, yes. <laughs> kind of like, kinda like if, if Celeste were a puzzle game. You know, when you, when you finish a level of Celeste, you just feel, oh, finally. Um, the best Glad part... Glad you feel that. Yeah. The, my favorite part of the gameplay, though, is that it very smartly doesn't ramp up the difficulty with every single level. Each world gets harder, but when you enter a new area, it starts over again and kind of trains you the new things that you're doing for that level. So you have those moments of success early on that re-ramp up the difficulty with each new area instead of just increasingly getting harder and harder and harder and harder. So you almost get like a little break to still feel like you're doing something good before it gets hard again. So it's almost two steps forward, one step backwards. Yes. Yeah. And I just, I think that's a brilliant design because some of these puzzles are very tricky, but the pedestrian, you can play it on PC, uh, Game Pass, or PC, PlayStation, Switch. Um, but if you have Game Pass, Seriously, check it out. It's, it's worth a try. I love Will it do. a lot. And you'll like it, CB. It's very easy achievement points. It's just complete the level Yay! 100 achievement points. So, sold. All right. Before we get on to our topic of the week, I want to remind everybody about our Facebook page, which can be found at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the GoCast. We have some new members to say hello to over there. We've got Barrett Cohen and Bryce Peterson. Welcome to the group. Also, our Discord is uh, still getting new members over there. We've got lots of good community topics going over there and just an awesome group of people that keep that place going. The link for that is in the show notes if you'd like to join it. And we want to say hello to Big Man Alpha and Lightning Bolt, spelled with a 7 instead of a T in Lightning. Uh, also, Grant is back. I didn't know Grant left, but uh, Grant is back in there as Stemage. If you'd like to chat with uh, the guy that did all the music for our podcast, and also was on our Game of the Year episode. You can meet him over and there. And for uh, Hextech, right? <laughs> Hextech, yes. Which I need just to go back and play some more. Just an all-around good guy. He's just a, he's an awesome dude. And uh, also, if you get a chance, drop us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. We do appreciate uh, the feedback, and it helps us get uh, our podcast in the ears of more listeners. And then lastly, our website is thegamingoutsider.com. There you can find all of our episodes, as well as any editorials or reviews that we do. Uh, I had some catch-up this past week. Uh, I So you can see my review for Fuser, which is a game I talked about a long time ago. Also, Red Out Space Assault. Zach's review of Halo Infinite is up there. Uh, my review of Indigo 7 Quest for Love. And also my review of Space Scavenger are all on the website. And then lastly, CB has a written review for some uh, EPOS headphones that he reviewed for us. Uh, a couple of them, one of them he liked a lot better, but uh, he is seriously in love with those headphones, so check out that review for sure. Last thing we want to mention, he's wearing them right now. Last thing we want to mention before we get to the topic is our sponsor for The Gaming Outsider is Manscaped. You've heard us talk about them multiple times, but I want I can't stop talking about it. I use these products every single day. We well, also we, love them. We also can't stop talking about it because they sponsor us. Well, <laughs> true, but even if they weren't sponsoring us. I'd be telling everybody about it because I absolutely love this stuff. Use no, sure. it every single day. I, I, I do talk about it. I talked about it at Christmas, right? Seeing people. Uh, it's, it's a good product, man. It, mm -hmm. it trims your nether regions perfectly. The nooks and the crannies, etc. It's all good stuff. Mm -hmm. A lawnmower 4.0 is no joke. It really yeah. is outstanding. No tugs, no pulls. Uh, it, is the, it is the Cadillac of trimmers, in my, in my opinion. I actually need to hop on there and buy some uh, some more shampoo. Right, that makes out. a lot of sense for yeah. your scalp. <laughs> hey, hey, there is some hair there. I do have a beard. I had, you know what? Actually, I have started using the shampoo. I ran out of my old shampoo. Started using this. It's uh, it's effective. It's a sh it's a shampoo. I don't know what's very exciting to say about it, but I guess if you wanted all your bathroom stuff, you can get it all in one trip. I just like mm -hmm. the way it smells. It smells the body, great. The body wash is good. Yeah. I had some people reach out to me that uh, were gifted uh, some products from Manscaped for Christmas. 
and you know using using our promo code and uh, they were pleasantly surprised said they really liked the smell of it and they had been looking for a trimmer and were very happy with the product so it's, it's kind of an ideal gift item because i don't really feel like that's something it's not something i would want to purchase for myself no matter what i needed you know mm-hmm. yeah so it's a it's a good thing to get as a gift very good. And uh, like I said, if you don't want to take our word for it, try it out for yourself. And you can do so with a promo code, uh, the GoCast. If you use that promo code at manscaped.com, you will get 20% off of your purchase as well as free international shipping. So what are you waiting for? Give it a shot. You will not be disappointed. I have not heard a bad thing about these products. And you also help out the gaming outsider at the same time. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. It is a new year, which means it's time once again for us to discuss our gaming goals for 2022. Actually, not just gaming goals, but uh, our uh, our normal resolutions as well that have nothing to do with video games. We asked our community what gaming resolutions that they had for the coming year. But before we get to those and our new ones, CB was gracious enough to go back to the Wayback Machine to last year to check out what our goals were. Uh... And then, and then wrote them down for us. So let's start with our non-gaming goals from last year and see how we stacked up. Zach, let's start with you, man. What were what were your goals for last year, and how'd you do? Uh, well, it, well, in the non-gaming category, I said I was going to go deep on Aquaman and Wonder Woman comics. I, I did do both. Uh, in fact, I'm an adamant Aquaman reader now. I, I'm buying all of the Aqua books, you know, like like uh, the sidekicks and stuff, and. Black Manta has a comic right now that is uh, questionable, but I'm still buying it. Uh, so that was very exciting. Wonder Woman, it turns out, uh, maybe I haven't found the right run, but I think there's just so there's only so many Greek god stories I can take. <laughs> you know, and, and they keep going back to that well. So I did, I did achieve the goal, but uh, I don't know. Someone, someone direct me to the better Wonder Woman stories, if they exist. Well, there's a video Probably. game coming, so... Probably the 90s. Yeah, I hear the George Perez stuff's supposed to be pretty good. It's just, I also don't, I just don't have a lot of love for the Greek Pantheon, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to get too invested. Uh, and then my other non-gaming goal was to finish a comic book script, which uh, did not happen. So, uh, whoops. Well, and that's, that's a gosh darn shame, because it's only, they're only like 22 pages. So. Yeah. But, uh, not, uh, did not, uh, did not do that. Nope. Well, it it could be worse. I mean, there's always next year. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see about all that. Should we jump to CB's non-gaming, or do you want to hear my gaming uh, failures well, as well? Well, I th- I think let's just run down the the non-gaming first. Yeah, yeah that sounds right to me. I like that because uh, my, mine was read uh, at least twenty books. Uh, I came in at twenty one. Nice wow. on the wire. Bernstein so, Bears, go to camp. No, no, no. Uh, I did branch out a little bit more this year. Got a little bit more into mythology this year. No, did you read Norse so, mythology, Neil Gaiman? Uh, I actually read that the previous year. Oh, okay. That's a great book. But uh, I started reading some into Chinese mythology, Egypt mythology. Um, got a little bit more into like history and like big projects that people have done over time. So... I like reading random stuff, so uh, I will say I think I, I think I read one book a month this year because I've, I've been trying to keep up with my audible subscription and make sure I finish the book I started that month before I get my new credit hmm. so s- <laughs> I forgot that I even had an audible subscription for a while, so when I get a notif- an email notification, you have six unused credits, I'm like, oh God <laughs> yeah, I, Time I to catch up I'm a total dummy, and I read all of it in in print. Can't it do t- it. Takes way more time investment. Now, I'm not. I'm not I'm trying next. to. I was saying, I'm not trying to be the guy who's like, huh, "You listen to a book, you mean?" I'm just saying, paper. It takes more time to read paper books because you have to stop everything else you're doing mm-hmm. in life. So I read 13 books, which is more than a more than I read the year before. So that's exciting. Nice. I think you you and I both read a couple of the same books. The uh, the High Republic books. Oh yeah, yeah. I've read I've read all the High Republic books so far. So that's good. I'm, Those are good stuff. Yeah, they. The, I read. Um, oh God, what was the first one? Light, Light of Hope, or Light of the Jedi? Light of the Jedi. I yeah. finished that one. Liked right. it. I I need to read more. 
I love of that series. Why the Jedi is great because it feels like every three three pages is a new chapter. That's yeah, fine. it is. Fun. It was surprisingly a quick read. Yeah, it's a fa- it's a fast pace. I like it. So, uh, and then uh, I wanted to start writing more, uh, and I specifically said write something for Smirk. R- <laughs> R.I.P. Yep. yep, that uh, unfortunately did not come to fruition. Zach's uh, old podcast, which is still available to listen to, right? Right, and still tremendous. One hundred episodes of absolute gold. And I'll tell you what, at the at the family get together. Quite a few Smirk fans. Oh, really? Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of crazy. I guess a short short anecdote. My cousin Cohen is fourteen years old. He grew up listening to Smirk. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like a fanboy of me. It was kind of weird. Aw. Yeah, he was he was like nervous to talk to me because he knew me mostly through Smirk. Aw. kind of old is he? Fourteen. That's pretty cool, man. And then he unloaded upon me all of the Five Nights at Freddy lore. Oh, really? So if you guys have any questions. Uh, <laughs> from, from what I gather, it's a lot. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on there. Anyway, back to, back to the topic at hand. All right. How did how the writing go, CB? Um, abysmal. Yeah. There, there was a lot that happened last year that kind of got in the way of some of that. Well, don't worry. We're about to, Scott and I will have to fess up to some abysmal writing pledges here shortly. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm on the same <laughs> boat with you. Yeah. Um, is it my turn? It yes. Is. Let's see, drink 64 ounces of water every day. I, have, I did not track that, but I will say for the first half of the year, I was doing really well with that. Doing really well. Up until uh, school started, not so much, <laughs> but uh, I was doing quite well. I think I said also exercise more. As you guys know, I did start going to the gym quite frequently. I've, again, fallen off uh, since school started, but um, getting back to it now that the new year is here. And I said relax more. And uh, CB wrote here the phone challenge, the 10, 20, 30 version, which I forgot about that because, as you guys all know, I have a problem uh, with my phone. I get bored very easily, and I will just pick up my phone and find something to do. Mm-hmm. and so CB's challenge was to, what, take 10 minutes a day? Well, then... specifically, Zach threw down the original challenge of 10 minutes a day, and it increased by 10 minutes every month. So oh, it was okay. 10, then 20, then 30. Wow, I that's threw a down good the challenge. challenge. That's a good challenge. You should have done that. And I threw down the challenge to double that. Well, so it was 20, 40, 60. Oof. Yeah, it would have been and fine. No, yeah, two hundred forty by the end of the year, you would not have been able to go four hours straight six a day. Hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, four hours. I mean, while I sleep. <laughs> no, because you, you and you even said that in that episode. You're like, oh, I just sleep and then I don't have my phone, and I'm like, no, that doesn't count. Well, at least at least uh, Scott's terrible humor remains. Yeah, yeah. But hey, I did go the one full day with my phone off, like legitimately off. You did three hundred and sixty-four days of <laughs> didn't quite get there. Yeah. I completely forgot about this challenge. Honestly, I did not avoid it. I just, well, I genuinely forgot. You were probably on your phone when we were talking about it. <laughs> and, and it's funny because um, the year before when we made him the, where it's like, oh yeah, if you run a half marathon, we'll buy you a quest. And you, you tried to get us to go, oh, well, if I do this phone challenge, will you guys buy me a quest then? <laughs> and I'm like, no. you're not going to follow through with it. So I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the, is that the challenge again? Is to do the ten, twenty, thirty? I'm not saying for a, for, any prize here. Just well, I don't know. We'll get to your resolution soon, I guess. Yeah, that's up to you. you man. Start with twenty. Um, relaxing more. I, I no, no, no. Didn't you failed miserably. No offense. On uh, just we know the year you've had. There's no way. Yep. Yeah. I love you to death, man. But this, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty one was In not fact, my you favorite. M- you might have relaxed significantly less. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. There is a uh, guilt factor. Because here's my thing. Whenever I do relax or try to relax, I can't shut my brain off of all the things that I should be doing and to get caught up. And I just have to accept the fact that I'm never going to get caught up on anything and just live in the moment. And that's very, very difficult for me to do. It's very hard to do. All right. So back to gaming goals or resolutions. Uh, Zach, what did you have last year? Well, one thing I said I want to get more platinum trophies, which I can't really 
uh, do, do the proper math on because PlayStation still hasn't done their year roundup, which is uh, almost embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, but I did I definitely got a few last year. Um, I think I, I think I might even got the Zwan Yuan one. It's a uh, it's a it's just a, it's a fun thing, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get more platinum trophies this year. I think that'll be a lot of fun. All right, and then of course, write an editorial a month. <laughs> Well, I think I wrote two, so... <laughs> you wrote two more than I did. Uh, woof. The fellow woefully short on that goal. When you say it out loud, write one editorial a month, it's nothing. Yeah. You know? It's, it feels so easy. And Scott's on his phone right now. Uh, just I'm looking the, up a number for my goal. Shut <laughs> just, up. Just let the audience know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, so uh, editorial month. And then, but then, like, because I, I, I get... I'm like, how do they do it at, you know, Game Informer and, and, and et cetera. But then you kind of look at their editorials and it's, they're not very exciting usually. So yeah, that's, that's how. But that's also their job. They get paid for it. They do. Absolutely. And it's usual, you know, a, a lot of the websites, you know, Kotaku, it's like, boy, why can't I play as a girl in Halo? You know, nonsense yeah. articles. Mm-hmm. So. But they get their clicks. Absolutely. They always do. You could talk as a joke. Sorry, this last year was embarrassing for them. Anyway, yeah, I think uh, say to say I failed that one. The platinum trophy thing. Speaking for next year, it would be nice to play fewer games more intimately. That would be exciting, but I just don't know if that's really possible with the the podcast and the reviews and everything. What do you mean more intimately? Like play for yourself or not play it at a just, breakneck speed? Yeah, or or you know, I'm playing this game this month because I want to get every trophy or something like that. But mm -hmm. it's always it's always about keeping up, you know. Fair enough. CB? Ooh. Well, first and foremost, my big one. 50,000 gamer score in one year. Did you hit it? Yeah. Do I you want to know the numbers? Come on, he did. Come on. 90, 95,000. 65,514. Wow. Honestly, less than I thought. But still impressive. Don't get me wrong. So, I, I, I hit that one. Okay. Good job. Um, six PlayStation games played uh -huh. to finish. How'd that go? I didn't even play one. That sounds right. <laughs> you didn't play but, one, or you didn't you didn't finish one. Well, so I, don't know, I didn't play it. my my PS Five. Like I think got turned done once last year. Your PS Five probably bricked, and you don't even know it. <laughs> probably, <laughs> but but I I do remember having the conversation that I wanted to branch out for more than just Xbox, and I did play twenty four new Switch games last year. That's okay. cool. Yeah. So I I did accomplish my goal of branching away from Xbox for a little bit. Um, fifteen reviews. Yeah, I punted hard on that one, there, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you, how many did you finish it with? I think seven, seven or eight. Hey, you got halfway there. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, life life happens. New job, moving. Yeah. It was, it was it was a rough year. You could have just pulled a Scott and save up five at the end of the year and just barrel them out. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I completely forgot about like uh, Indigo Seven. I'm like, wow, man, wasn't that like that was a while ago? <laughs> I had been sitting on that review for so long, and I didn't do it just for the numbers. I like I I've been staring. I've been in the spot where I refuse to take a new game until I get caught up in my reviews, and the end of the year just seemed like the right point to just sit down. I was the same way. Up. Yeah. Uh, because I, I hit that void when we were getting ready to move, and I'm like, I don't want to take on anything new. Mm -hmm. And I paid the price for it. But we'll, when we get to this year's, I'm going to try to make up for it. So. All right. All right. So for me, my gaming goals uh, last year apparently was to try a new genre style of game outside my comfort zone. I don't know that I did that. Do you guys remember any? No. Halo the, Infinite multiplayer? The, the, no. <laughs> Uh, that was this year. You, yeah, it, oh, not yeah, only well, was it this year, we it. also didn't apparently play Halo Infinite multiplayer. You played the weird mode. Yeah, uh, I feel like the easy answer would have been Horizon, Forza Horizon Five, because it was so popular and it was on Game Pass and everything. But you didn't, I mean, you didn't... I, I like racing games, so but I, that's and I did play it. Um, specifically, uh, when I when I listened to the episode, uh -huh. there was there was a secondary challenge to that. What was and it? We we failed you. Okay. Okay. Um, because Zach was supposed to find you a Souls like game. Oh. I was supposed to find you a shoot 'em up. Oh, okay. And Nate was supposed to find you a fighting game. Oh, okay. Well, Bloodborne is the Souls like you should play. 
Still. That's the one. Yeah, it's the best with. one. Is and it the most accessible one? Yes. I think okay. so. So I'm sure I could find you a, a shoot 'em up or two. It's Bloodborne is the one that in terms of combat and controls is the most similar to most games. Okay. I'm not gonna guarantee I'm gonna beat it. But I'll give it the old college try. Maybe I'll do the do this the streaming thing and have you like walk me through it. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'll guide you. Maybe you can do the phone challenge. You play ten minutes of Bloodborne the first day and then twenty minutes the next day. <laughs> <laughs> he might finish it this year. Uh, uh and then what else? Write an editorial a month. I had that goal as well. Uh, yeah. uh I don't think I did a single one. So you went up to me there, but also failed. Sack. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I gotta take the wins where I can, I guess. And then uh let's see. I was my goal was to write two reviews a month, which I did not hit, but I came moderately close to the number if you to follow the spirit of the law, if not the letter. Right. Like uh, my total at the end of the year was 18. Technically, I wrote 20 because the other two we didn't get published until the beginning of the year, but I wrote them in in 2021. Now, when I, I quick interjection, guys. He unloaded upon me a <laughs> nonsense of reviews during Christmas week. Yeah. To to edit and publish. So <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm not I'm not complaining that they didn't get published. I'm just saying I did I wrote them. We just Right. And I didn't point it at you. I was saying we didn't get it published. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault because I didn't I waited till the last minute. But um so twenty, I was four shy of of twenty four. But uh yeah. I, we all did not do very well, guys. <laughs> no, but but you know what? Here's the thing. I I actually had this conversation with my wife because she absolutely does not believe in resolutions. Okay. And I'm like, for me, there there is more of a guideline to try and make myself better. Yeah. So I still do them. The key is attainable, right? They got to be attainable. Yeah. Dude, me I doing, mean, I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to commit to a, a editorial a month. I mean, nothing year. sounds more attainable than an editorial month, though. <laughs> yeah. Share your opinion about video games 12 times a year. Oh, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, moving on, let's go to our new resolutions for 2022. Uh, let's do... Well, well, this time we'll go, Zach, you'll do both. You'll, you'll do your non-gaming resolutions and your oh, game man. resolutions. That's, that's a lot of hearing me at once. Why don't we do... Let's do our non gaming and circle back. Not okay. non and then. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, fine. Jeez. Okay, fine. Oh, man, you got you, those are a mutiny. I happened quickly. Yeah. All right. So we're doing non gaming first. Yeah. All right. My first non gaming resolution is apply to a minimum of six full time or contract writing positions. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Speaking of CB, you want to leave me? Guys, that's right. I want to leave this dumb show. <laughs> um, <laughs> That'd be, I mean, ideally, you get a writing job and Nick still do this. That would be the ideal scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that speaking to CBs, you know, the, the guidelines to better yourself, this, this very much uh, falls into that camp for me. I like it. Uh, and then another one is read at least three Gears of War novels. Hmm. I think I want to reread them. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And I, there's one, two, the Gears 5 era novels I have not read yet. There are two of those. So I do have to get there. In fact, one of them is finally filling in the gap between Gears 3 and 4. It was very exciting. Nice. Uh, and then the third one is, uh, this is very personal to my heart, get the ever-loving hell out of Kansas City. I hate it. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, Come back, bro. Come back. Uh, yeah, I don't know about Rockford. We'll, we'll see. But it, Janes, Janesville, close enough. <laughs> just, I gotta, I gotta get out of, I gotta get out of here. So. Oh, man. If you were closer, the times we would have Oh, yeah. Did All right. a couch co op sessions. Well, be great. maybe you might get in trouble. I'm just going to chain up. I'm just going to chain them up in the vault. <laughs> wow, that's kind of hot, though. <laughs> vault 54. Yep. I believe it'd be yeah. Vault 69. CB, uh, what's, uh, what's on your goal? Ooh. Uh, so for non gaming, uh, I would like to lose 30 pounds this year. Okay. Nice. A attainable. Nice start. Very healthy. Very healthy choice. Uh, I want to... Uh, so I've, I've been doing the Duolingo. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I want to have at least 150 consecutive days on there. Mm. Okay. So I, I kind of faltered a bit when I started the move. 
So I'm I'm getting back into that. That's a good one. Uh, I, yeah, I, I did Japanese for a while. I should really get back to it. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm gonna try to do two languages. I want to do French and Gaelic. Wow. Okay. So, Ambitious. So, yeah. I I try again, attempting to better myself. Um. So I have those two, and then I really do want to do at least twelve reviews. And six editorials this year. Those editorials, man, that's bold. Yeah, and I will, I will let Scott slap me across the face if I fail. Oh wow, things just got real. So Zach, be prepared in December, the end of this year, to be just getting a deluge <laughs> of reviews from CB. <laughs> no, no, like I, I want to have them. I want to. I want to be timely. Yeah. So one review a month and one editorial every other month? Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's my goal. Man, now I feel like I gotta... I, I can't. I can't fail again. But I feel like I should throw an editorial goal out there now. So. <laughs> I'm but, not even but gonna I feel, I feel <laughs> that there has to be stakes in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, like, steak. you like stakes. I do. I always got a Because steak competition is fun. Did somebody say steak? Mistake. <laughs> What? That was a, it's a Deuce Bigelow reference. Mel Gigolo? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, okay. I was, expect- <laughs> was not expecting Rob Schneider to be represented. <laughs> Scott knows that I am I am a like depth of just random quotes from random movies. All right, man. That's true. I can name any movie quote and CB will more than likely say the second line after it. I, I don't think he's failed me yet. I try not to. <laughs> so... All right, Scott. All right, back. Scott. The gauntlet is thrown down for you. All right. Um, my goal is to get to the gym at least three days a week. Okay. Uh, whether it be lifting or uh, running. You trying to get I swole? To... What's that? You trying to get swole? I, I you know, want to look good naked. Yeah, I already did. Then, then, um... I can. I'll confirm it. Hey, look... you... I'll confirm it. <laughs> You'll confirm it. <laughs> I'll be the judge. I mean, yeah. You know. If only, if only E three was in person again. Yeah. Oh, no. oh man. Speaking of, we didn't talk about that. We should talk yeah, about that in well, the news. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. I forgot to add that. But yeah, gym three times a week um, without fail. And I want to do that throughout the year, not just now in, um, you know, end of summer. I want to kind of. At least until shutdown happens again. Oh, yeah. It's, it feels inevitable at this point. I don't know. Our, we're up to like 20% in our county right now, which is insane. Forty-six percent of my students were gone today. I was gonna say, keep throwing them to school, though. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, since I failed on the phone challenge last year, I'm gonna do what CB said and uh, twenty minutes a day. With the increasing, and then forty minutes, and then sixty, all the way up to. Wow. Two, you're, gonna, you're doing the CV numbers, not the ZP numbers. Ooh. Ooh, I was now, now I feel that there needs to be a penalty if you fail this. I was, I was giving it to well, him. Well, the, the problem is there's no way to prove it. Right? Yeah. No oh, there are it. there are apps. Oh no. Let's we're not I'm not gonna stalk Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scott, I see you're on your phone. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean twenty minutes a day shouldn't be any problem. Just turn it off. Right, but sixty minutes a day by March seems like it would be. And I I mean that's an hour. Okay. If anything All else right. it's gonna be a reprieve for me for my gaming goals, right? All right, man, fine. Do what you like, gotta the, do. The the day that I did it, I did nothing but played Halo Infinite all day long. December's going to be the nightmare for him. That's right. going to be the nightmare because I will be home. That's four hours a day outside yeah. of sleeping that he can't touch his phone. Right. Oh, You're... I know exactly what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to buy you. They, so they make a box on Amazon that has a timer. You put your phone in it. When you shut it, it actually locks it. But that's that's for, still not accountability in terms of me actually putting it in the box. I think it would be easier for you, self-control wise. Yeah, oh, it's self control like, isn't a problem. Once it's off, it's not a problem. The problem is actually, you know, turning it off. And honestly, the the hard part was, you know, in my mind, like an, an emergency happens, or if somebody really needs to get a hold of me for for something, and then gets annoyed that I'm not, you know, what I mean. That that was the bigger stress for me than the emergency. It was actually, it was actually a reprieve to not like be checking notifications. The emergency thing always annoys me because I'm like, well, there. They didn't used to be so pressing that you had to get a hold of somebody that second. No, I know. But yeah. there's not like a landline. There's not, yeah. you know, there's literally no way to. 
I know, man. Yeah. That's how the world used to work. I know. I know. But it, it just makes me nervous. I've got, you know, grandparents and parents that are getting up there in years. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Those are, those are legit concerns. So, yeah, 20, 40, 60, all the way up to 240, which is, yeah, that's a long time, but I'm going to try it. All right. Uh, I didn't it, do it today, your... obviously, because I didn't, but. Well, it start, starts today. Well, so tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be day one. That's right. what I'm saying. So you're going to make it, make me a spreadsheet? You know, you know what? I will make a spreadsheet so every day you can, because I know you love spreadsheets, you can I do. hop on and just like check mark. Right. And you then, can, put, you can um, put the start time and the end time in there. That'd be, I know you love all your data. There you work. go. That's you like your work. data. No, it's not. It's easy. Then with we the can graph, like, okay, when, when it's got the most busy throughout the with day. With the insane <laughs> amount of information you make us put in our review spreadsheet, you're putting the start and end time is nothing. <laughs> I, I that that spreadsheet will be live tomorrow, and I will tag both of us. All, right, you know how to uh, do all che- three of us in it. You know how to do check boxes, right? No, screw that. Well, I'm that just going to so put column easier. one, column two, column three. We'll figure it out anyway. All right, um, but there, I, I mean, there's no way I'm going to hit 100, percent right? There's going to be days where I'm going to miss. So there's got to be like a percentage of, you know, like 85 percent. 85 percent. I'm not I'm, goal, sir. I'm not resolutions. Offering, I'm not offering a slap bet. To be clear. If I oh, fail no. slap, this, slap bets come on editorials. Yeah, there's no, there's no offer with editorials or anything for no, you to ever Scott, slap my I face. Get it, Scott? We get it, Scott. You're, you're, you're a pansy. It's no problem. I'm not a pansy. I am afraid <laughs> of CB and his hand. Well, well, he's got. Let me tell meaty you, paws like you would not believe. That is not happening. But my, if it ever happens, I'll only give you fifty percent. In my experience, they're quite gentle. All right, so eighty-five, eighty-five percent counts. Yeah. All right. So Jim, three times a week, uh, and yeah, the 20, 40, 60 for 85% of the days between now and December 31st. Man, December is going to be rough. Yeah. Four hours every day. So you should have done it in the reverse. Be like, start at 240 and then work down. Well, that doesn't, no, that, that wouldn't work. Yeah, I don't think Because you got to ease into it. You should have done it. Or maybe do a pyramid. Maybe like go up and then back down. No, you should have just done the easy numbers that I put forth. That's all. Well, we can go back. We can do 10, 20. No, no, it's too late now. You, no, no, you committed. You've, you've taken up like 10 <laughs> minutes of this podcast talking about this. You're committed. You've committed. All right. Back to the top with Zach. Gaming resolutions. All right. Right at the top. The first thing I want to do this year is replay the entire Gears of War franchise. Including oh, wow. Judgment? So I'm talking Gears 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Judgment, and Tactics. Ooh, uh, I'm gonna play okay. them all. It's gonna be oh, oh, and you gotta play Gears Pop. Oh, that's on your phone, right? Oh, I have no. I don't. I think it's discontinued, man. No, it's still live. That's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> um. Anyway, I think that'd be a lot of fun for one. And for one thing, it's finally gonna push me to play Tactics, which I want to do. It's just too long, but I think that would be a fun thing to have in the background throughout the year. Okay. You know, especially Any co-op or just by yourself. Eh, probably just by myself. I mean, if somebody wants to pop in, they can, but. I mean, the first three gears are like six hours each, so that should be no problem. Yeah. Right. Let's knock it out in a weekend. Right. So, yeah, I'm talking strictly storylines, of course. But Yeah, I think that'll be fun. Uh, then I also want to finally play and complete a Legend of Heroes game, which I know you guys probably don't know what it is, but... Uh, mm-hmm. I know what it is. Okay. Uh, specifically, I think I'm going to go after uh, Trails in the Sky on, on PSP slash Vita. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. That's, a, that's an RPG series i've always wanted to get into and it just i just need the push because i know they're supposed to be super long and i know like the first game in every series is particularly supposed to be about setup and then the second game is always about payoff so i don't know i i'm just very excited because every like trails in the sky is one country and then trails of cold steel will be another country and all these countries at war but you're getting everybody's perspective they're building this you know universe it's just very exciting and i and i feel i I just wish i was involved with it because it just sounds so cool and something i would care about and then finally, I want to uh, worry less about the zeitgeist conversations and FOMO and focus on the things that really speak to me or call out to me, especially when it comes to video games, right? Like, yeah, like I'm going to feel like I should be playing Horizon the second it comes out, but I got to keep, I admit, because I just know that's how my brain works. And I'll be like, no, I got, I can play for seven days before Elden Ring comes out, but I just got to be better about, I don't have to play everything the very second it comes out. And I know for the podcast, we do have to cover things timely, but I think I can do it in, in a more selective way that doesn't drive myself 
quite so crazy. I know what you what you're talking about because it's it's always hard because if you don't play it, it's, sometimes it's not even so much fear of missing out at the beginning. It's a fear of missing out entirely because if you don't play it right away at the beginning, then you're just never going to get to it. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I still haven't played Valhalla, one of my most anticipated games. Um, I still I, I was really looking forward to Far Cry Six. I haven't touched that in weeks. I feel like I need to get back into that now that um, I got Guardians done. Um. But I played something for me this week, so, you right. know? It, yeah, I just, I want to be better, yeah, about the balance, for sure. Because mm-hmm. it is hard when, when yeah, everyone's talking about it. But I think also our audience, I don't think would mind if, you know, I get to Horizon six months later and then start talking about it on the games we're catching up on or whatever. Right. I feel like our audience, yeah, wouldn't be bothered by that. Our audience has said in the past, like, uh, back when I was playing Skyrim, they were, they were kind of like the idea of me, like, talking about w- what I was doing in Skyrim that week. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of look forward to that and wish that we did more of that where instead of just like finishing a game quickly and doing it, like do a little checkup each month. So, yeah, so it doesn't right. have to be like a five minute segment. Just like, here's what happened. In yeah. Sky- this is the mission I did in Skyrim this Scott's, week. Scott's week in Skyrim. Yeah. Man, I have to, it's been so long. I have to go back and see what my character, you know what I mean? Like that's a, that's a game that you really need to remember how the controls work and especially with how varied those character classes were. Right. Yeah. Um, I was definitely big in archery, but that's all I remember. <laughs> sneaky all right, sneaky cool. archers. Yeah, those are my resolutions. CB? All right. Ooh, this is going to be rough. Um, first foremost, 60,000 gamer score. Oh, all right. Got up so, the Annie. Yep. You, you, that's not up. That's not up. He did 65 this year. No, but the goal no, is- no, 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 no. I my my initial bid was fifty thousand. Right, yeah. Uh-huh. I went above and beyond that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm upping it to sixty. So I'm holding myself accountable that I have to achieve that again. I get okay. what you're saying, CB. Scott's just a poopooer. <laughs> he is a poopooer. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I'm known for. Uh, I mean, as you guys know, my my primary focus with a lot of my gaming is collecting. Mm-hmm. I want to add. F- 575 new games to the collection this year. Mm. How many have you got so far? Nine. Not no way. After what you, after that score you That's got. That's all this I week? kept out of that. Oh really? That's all I kept. Just nine. Because the rest I had. So many games, but alright. So Do you keep a tally every year or I guess? Yeah. Okay. I do. So uh I last year I was uh just under six hundred. Okay. Right. So, but but the the game is getting harder the more I acquire. Right. Things you just gotta get start having into PS One, man. That's that's where you're that's where you're lacking. Mm, well, PS One, PS Two, Xbox, Wii. Yeah. Almost everything disc based. Yeah. But it's still not cheap. No, I hear you. I hear. You. But uh, um. Uh, on top of that, I want to finish at least one more collection this year okay how far away are you from your closest well i mean the easy one would be virtual boy but that's a that's a tough mountain to climb for the final yeah it's like a five or six hundred dollar cartridge uh it's closer to a thousand now is it now jeez yeah jack's so jack's brothers jack uh jack brothers jack brothers yeah so i mean of the ones that i'm really close on they're they're pricey boys Mm -hmm. so um I, i you know i will post a list of things that i'm gonna attempt for the for for my collection this is what you do is you you talk about make a spreadsheet for me we should have a tab for each of us for our stuff that we can kind of tally off throughout the year yeah we can so we can kind of all keep tabs on each other that'd be a little bit more exciting than having to go back and look at you know listen to the episode we can actually just like see each other's progress that would be fun do do that scott your teacher you love making spreadsheets i do love making spreadsheets there you go that's that's your goal for tomorrow All all right um and uh, I, I really, I really do need to do something with PlayStation this year. So, <laughs> something more than zero. Yes. God, so you're gonna play God of War, right? At least. Oh, yeah. God of War and Horizon. Yeah. Okay. So I'm unfortunately both those will only come out on PlayStation. So yeah. both both of those will be completed. Um, there has to be at least you know what. At least one AAA title that I would play on Xbox, I will have to play on PlayStation. Oh, instead. that's a good one. That is good. That's a good. I like that. 
So that that's going to be tough for me because Scott knows how much I love to play on my Xbox. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, we think of those thousand achievements you'll be missing out on. Oh, we, maybe or we I'm should play a game we, twice. We should pick it yeah. for him. Oh be, no. no! Oh, that. Well, we wouldn't pick a heartbreaking. That, that would one. hurt. Yeah, we wouldn't pick a heart. We wouldn't do like the next Assassin's Creed and ruin the streak. Don't get it. Don't get it no, 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 nothing like that. But like. I don't. I don't even know. I have to like look at the right, list. I don't know, like year. Suicide Squad or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, Gotham Knights. You okay. gotta play it on PlayStation. Ooh, that. Mm, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that one because uh, because the entire Arkhamverse has been on Xbox. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, well, Suicide Squad's in the Arkhamverse actually. I know. So we'll 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 come back to so. Of of course, the two big big heavy hitters for PlayStation, but I I think I fi- I dropped the ball, so I'm definitely going to say six PlayStation games this year completed. Mm. So I'm well, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm you know what I will take it up one notch seven. God, why do you do this? Yeah, why? <laughs> All right, you didn't even do one got, last year, man. <laughs> because <laughs> well, I got to stress my time my time limits. There's two there's two in the back. Got a War Horizon. So definitely going to play those. So yeah, so just just kind of. And making those one instead of two. Okay. And there's bound to be more exclusives that you're going to want to play, too. Probably, especially if that PSVR 2 drops. Final that Z, that doesn't Final count. Final Fantasy 16, maybe? Final, VR games don't count, right? Why don't they? If they're a full title. Yeah, if they're VR 2, I would think that it would count. Okay. Yeah. All right. It'll, so. it'll be popping trophies on this PlayStation 5. Yeah. See? There you go. All right. Is that it? I think. Right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean that's that's three for me. Okay, my number one. Uh, you've already mentioned it, but uh, I my goal, one big gaming goal that you already talked about. This kind of dips into last year. Is I want to get farther in Bloodborne than I did the last time I played it. You remember where you got the last time? I passed the third boss. Oh, okay. Which the apparently blood... everyone says if you pass that, then the rest of the game starts clicking. Right. Yeah, the Bloodstar mm-hmm. Beast. So, um, if I could do that, then, well, if you, uh, yeah. you know, if you need help on a boss, you can always summon me. It's true. That's true. But, uh, yeah, I, I really want to see what everyone, why everyone loves that game so much because I, I have very little patience when it comes to games. I, I need successes more often than failures and mm-hmm. you definitely have more failures than successes when you play a Souls yes, game. If- that, that is very true. That's what, that's what makes the success so sweet for me. Yeah, and, and you know, I've experienced things like that. Like, um, there are hard, I mean, Super Meat Boy, I love that game. Volgar the Viking, I love that game and never finished it. Like, I, I don't know. It was hard. Huh? That game was hard. That's what I'm saying. I enjoyed it, though. Like I, like, I enjoyed the memorization, which is what Bloodborne is. I almost want Zach to play that game and see if it's like, it's like a 2D Souls-like without dodging. Which one, sorry? It's called Volgar the, uh, Volgar Viking. the Viking. It's like a 16 bit oh, okay. looking game, 2D side scroller, but it's straight memorization. Like you just have to memorize where every enemy is. They always appear in the exact same spot every single time. And it's just about memorizing. Yeah, that's cool. I, I think like it's that. on Game Pass. You should check okay. it out. Uh, so that's my number one. My number two is a little vague. It's kind of hard to um, you know, quantify this or, or um, you know, prove. But this year, I want to play. Just as many games that I play for review, I want to play that many games for myself. Wow, okay. So for every game that I do a review for, I want to play a game that I'm playing just because I want to, even if it's a game that I'm replaying. Okay, if it's a new game and you happen to write a review, does that just work out rather well then? Well, like if I bought it, right? Yeah. If I bought a new game and it's one that I wanted to play, uh-huh. um, then I would count that as a game for me. Because if I'm paying money for it, I want to play it, right? Okay. Um, I mean, sometimes we get lucky and those stars align. But right. That is the best. That It is the best. But yeah, I want to, even if it's to go back to the well and play something old. Like, I started playing Paper Mario on Switch the other day. Forgot how much I adore that game. So and by good. the way, it did not have technical glitches that anybody's talking about. Um, Scott's, got but, the, Scott's the Holy Grail of Switches. Yeah, apparently. But yeah. Um, and my last one is a big one. Uh, I want to stream playing multiplayer games with people from the community at least twice a month. Wow. Mm-hmm. Go from uh, right now, I've, been, I've, I've got a whole uh, Borderlands crew set up, people that, that want to play Borderlands and want to do it every week. 
Now, I don't anticipate that happening. I'm, I'm sure something's always going to happen like it did our first week that we planned it. Uh, but I want to do that and I want to stream it. I bought a cable to extend the camera so I can actually have it closer to me on my couch instead of it being like on the other end of the room like we had it at the, uh, at the, at the uh, what do you call it, benefit or charity thing that we did. So that people can actually see. I want to start uh, trying to build that up a little bit because people have asked me uh, to to stream. They said they enjoyed watching us play and they wanted me to do it more, just not playing pinball. <laughs> so, so yeah, Bloodborne, uh, play games for me and uh, stream at least twice a month. Sound good? Yeah, that, uh, those yeah. Uh, spreadsheets would come in handy on this. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty intricate spreadsheet. We're like adding stuff to it every single day, but right. not on my phone apparently. <laughs> <laughs> by the way was that cheating see i'm surprised you didn't call me out on cheating for, on my day my day of phone off you because you messaged me at one point and tried to call me out no no okay because i did use messenger on my laptop mm, of course it, i mean it's skirting a line i mean i didn't but... use it all day it was more or less like hey so and so this is where you can get a hold of me yes so, I mean, I, I think for the day you accomplished the goal of just trying to, like, relax and have Scott time. Yeah, and I did. I did. To be fair, it would, or to be clear, it would have been more relaxed if I had that distraction, but I needed, you know, I have to get over that nobody can get a hold of me thing, which is something people crave, but I have issues dealing with. But I'll work on that this year, guys, I promise. But those were our 22 goals. Let's see what the community said, starting over at Facebook. Sean Coates says, funny, I actually posted this within the group. Uh, I stated that I needed to go to the backlog, play some rather popular games and game franchises that I've never played, like the Dead Space games, Mass Effect Trilogy, and Ocarina of Time, just to name a few. Boy, Ocarina of Time, if that's not a Break the Seal episode we need to do. Mm. I have no idea who hasn't played that game. <laughs> that's, oh, that's right, you haven't, have you? Nope. Oh, that's right, we talked about that, because we were talking about doing it where... One of us plays it OG, one of us plays it on Switch Online, and one of us plays the remake on 3DS so that we can kind of compare. That'd that would be, good. be fun, yeah. That would be fun. Sean, Sean should... an easy way into Dead Space would be wait for the remake this year and then play that, and if you like that, then you could jump into it too. Mm. Good point. Just a little, just Although a little... I still would argue that the original holds up quite well. No, no doubt, but he's got that new Series X, he's probably going to push the limit, you know? Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Is that is that only going to be on Xbox? I'm sure it'll be on PlayStation. No, I don't think that was exclusive. There's the game. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we'll Dead see Space on PlayStation Five. That oh, There's... that's interesting. Oh, all so, right. We'll, we'll see when we get there. Uh, he finishes up and says, "Also, I intend to get the most out of my newly acquired Series X this year and beyond." Yes, congrats, Sean. He finally got himself a Series X, and he's very, very excited. He took a bite picture and everything. It was pretty great. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, Zach? Chip Holt writes in, I would normally say to dig into the backlog, but let's be real. I resolved to play one game to completion before purchasing a new one, and of course, mixing in a sports game when I don't know what to play. I just finished Kenna Bridge of Spirits, and after a week or so, got the Guardians of the Galaxy game. I'm about two hours in now. The hypocrisy to all of this is that I have the Director's Cut PS5 version of Ghost of Tsushima still in its shrink wrap waiting. I think I'm shying away from that until uh, the, because of the time involved in the game. The backlog lives on. Oh, Chip, do yourself a favor. Yeah. Play that game. Well, Ghost he's... of Tsushima did not feel like a time sink at all. That was just a joy. Now you're playing Guardians of the Galaxy, which is better than Ghost of Tsushima, so you're starting off right there. Ooh. Ooh. Them's fighting words, sir. Well, if you remember my, my game on your list, it was much lower on my list than it was on your guys'. That's true. Just not, Fair enough. I'm just not the open world guy. It depends on uh, Chip's, uh, you know, play style here. Well, Chip's got to be Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy before he allows himself to play any other new games. So. That's true. You're, you're in for a long haul on that one. I think that's so financially responsible. The, the, you have to beat a game before you can play one. I wish I had that. Re I might institute that for comics. Like if I want yeah. to buy a new trade, I have to finish a trade. Because boy, oh boy, do I have a reading backlog. Yeah? Yeah. I yeah. Like it. All right, Chip, you might have inspired me. <laughs> CB. All right. Scott Bores. Mine is the same one I've had for the last couple of years. Concentrate on things I like about a game instead of the things I don't like. Uh, a friend was telling me about a game, spent 15 minutes talking about all the things he hated, then finished with, don't get me wrong, I really like this game. 
Uh, it sure didn't didn't sound like a game he uh, he liked it. Uh, it sure didn't sound like he liked it. I had word problems there. <laughs> Uh, and I need to remember, I play games to have fun, not to be mad, and things I dislike about the game. And being honest, by doing this, it has made me enjoy playing games a lot more. I will agree. Yeah. That's kind of I'm, like the spirit of the podcast, right? Is we've, you know, we we can be critical without just focusing only on the negative stuff and focus yeah, more on the good stuff, I, the stuff we like. I love playing crappy games because yes. I find the fun things about them. No, you enjoy watching me play crappy games. <laughs> hey, you know what? I Dragon's Lair is not a bad game. No, you just and like I watching enjoyed, me. I enjoyed that, both me playing it and watching you get wrecked. Well, yeah, because you have everything memorized. This game is all about memorization. I had no idea what was going on in that game. So ah, good Just stuff. play it more. Rob Matthew says, VR, I think I'm going to dive into it finally. CV. Mm, welcome to the club, brother. Where do you suggest him start? Quest two, Oculus Quest two. Yeah, yeah. Be so many, people, um, so many people I know got Quest twos for Christmas. It's insane. Yeah, uh, Oculus Quest two because I I don't think the Quest three has a lockdown date yet. Mm -hmm. But the Oculus Quest two honestly is one of the best entry points into VR that's that exists. So accessible. You don't need to know anything about setup. It's it's so easy yeah. to do. Not, not only that, like you don't have to have a high end computer. If you do have a high end computer, it can only bolster what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. So, good quest call. two. Thomas Bex writes in, not necessarily stop buying so many games, but more to play the games I buy. I think that's a pretty safe one for everybody, right? Yeah. I think we're all in the same yeah. boat. Like, yeah. The like, number of games on my, on my like install screen on Xbox. That I, I, I scroll through sometimes to try to find an old game that I want to play, and I'm like, oh, I forgot I bought that game. Did that earlier today. Yeah. Yep, like, that's... you see it on sale, and like, oh, I'll play that someday. Yep, I, I saw it's... Metro Exodus was on sale on PlayStation. I went there, I was like, oh, I own it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I haven't mean, done whoops. that yet. I hear people do that on Steam a lot. Like, they'll see it on Steam sale and go to buy it, yeah. and it's like in their library already. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I can see that. All right, uh, Mark Szymanski. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn purchased, uh, decide number one, do I really need a next gen console now? Uh, two, if yes, which one best fits my play style? Uh, finally get through my backlog a bit. He's been, he's been uh, well, catching up quite a, he finished Guardians. Yeah. So he's been doing uh, pretty well, well. Mark, if, uh, you bought Horizon Zero Dawn, obviously you know which console to buy. Uh, I'm an Xbox guy, but uh, clearly you are leaning slightly into the PlayStation world. Well, he said purchase, so I, mean, I guess he hasn't played it yet. But I would say True. you don't really need an X-Gen console now. No. Well, I mean, as, someone, as a recent... Xbox is getting there. Well, the recent purchase honestly, there. I think this is the year. This is the year if you're going to buy an X-Gen console, I think this is the year to be doing it in. Definitely. I'm just I'm struggling to think of the games that are you know next-gen exclusive outside of Suicide Squad. Starfield. Is it though? We don't yeah. know. We still don't know what that yeah, game we is. We don't know. It well with X well with Xbox, it's even if it is only on the series consoles, you can stream it to Xbox One. So mm -hmm. kind of a yeah. kind of a win win all around on that one. But yeah, X we don't give it to you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> uh am I up? Yeah. Kevin uh, Honigford. To finish every game I play. I have developed a really, really bad habit of not finishing games I start due to various reasons, most common being that a newer and shinier game came along or an opportunity to review a game would come up. I would take the bait and in the process lose what interest I had in whatever I was playing previously. New or backlog, whatever games I boot up this year, I'm going to see through. I love hearing that, Kevin, especially since he got a review copy of a game today. So, yes. Uh, Do I just sabotage him and just keep throwing Sonic games in front of him? <laughs> just distract, distract him. I keep sending him texts, by the way, of anything Sonic I find for sale just to see if he'll buy it. I'm surprised. <laughs> it's, yeah. worked, it's worked a couple times. I was going to say, does it, I was going to assume he just always replies, I already have it. Uh, well, some of the stuff is like to pre-order. Like oh, this okay. thing came out and you get, and you can pre-order it. Or, right, like, that, or that, that. like there's like, there's already like a 2023 Sonic calendar out. Um, like oh. that you can you well, can pre-order already. Yeah. Well, they had the, the Sonic. Uh, what was uh, there was Sonic like a Sonic yeah, television fun. show that I saw was it was coming to Blu-ray. Sonic Forces oh, the, or something. 
or I can't remember the word it, after. Yeah, it's probably Sonic. It was probably the Sonic Forces one. I think that might have been. But I mean, we do the same thing with you for Legend of Zelda right. stuff. Well, I do the same thing for you guys with Legos. I can send anything. Specifically, Nate. <laughs> I we have a text thread between me, Nate, and CB, and whenever I get I, I see a sale for something with Legos. Nate almost just always buys it. Constantly filled with TikTok and Legos. <laughs> That's all their stream is, is TikTok and Legos. Good call. All right, Zach. Wait, is Stefan? Yep. Yes. Stefan Oramming. Well, I'd like to say that I'm going to clean up the old backlog, but it'll probably be the same as usual. Start playing a game that seems interesting at the start, and then realize I could be playing something I know is fun to play and go right back to those instead. Yeah, I want to go yeah. back. I want to go back Been to some there. games this year too. I don't have it as like an actual goal, but yeah. there's there's games from when, like the Xbox One was around that I'm like like near the beginning, like the original Xbox One, not the Xbox One X. Mm-hmm. Like there's games that were there that I'm like, I want to play that. What like Rise? No. Um, oh God, there was uh, the one game where the the woman is blind, and you use like a sense. To like oh. find somebody in the house. Oh, no, you're not the. I'm thinking there's the that one. Uh, um, Elijah Woods game I don't that he made. That. Is this um, the same game you're talking about? No, no. The, like that's a different game. Oh, that that one game that he made. Scott I, hit his funny bone. <laughs> it's funny to see. He's probably um, he's probably reaching for his phone. No, it was um, not. Shut up, Zach. Uh no, what, it was like transcendence or something. Oh yeah, no, transcendence was the was the, the Johnny Depp movie. <laughs> I don't know. Let's yeah, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, David Newman. Uh, once June July rolls around, my time for gaming is going to decrease significantly. So I just want to enjoy the time I have for gaming in the first half of the year. Yeah, he starts his clinic or not clinicals. What do you call it when you're becoming a doctor? Um, rotation. No, he had a different word for it. I I can't remember. Like when you you're you're basically a, you you can be called doctor, but um he, oh, he's um, he's yelling at his his ear pods. Yeah, right probably. Now. Yeah, I, I I know it is, but now now like I've just hit uh like is it, the wall. Is too. it not clinicals? I th- I thought there was a different word for it. Clinicals is, I could yeah. I, it could be. I, anyway. I feel like there's another word, but yeah, this is just like the Elijah Wood thing. We just gotta move on. <laughs> we just gotta move on. Yep. He'll, I'm sure he'll correct me on, on Discord, so... <laughs> well, I, I I hope you good luck with both of those. Yeah. So... Dr. Newman. That just sounds funny. <laughs> it's gonna, he's gonna be awesome, though. It's gonna be cool. Well, so. my, for, my brain just, like, implemented Seinfeld. <laughs> Newman. <laughs> Dr. Newman. Yeah, I'm sure he's never heard that before. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, that wrote in with um, all of your resolutions and... Uh, Looking forward to putting together our spreadsheet so that uh, we, the three of us can keep tabs on each other here and uh, see how we do. Hopefully we do better next year than we did this year because um, we all did pretty bad this year. But anyway, uh, next week's topic is still yet to be determined. So stay tuned to our social media outlets to see uh, what our topic will be next week. But that's going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Zach, do you have any parting words before we get out of here for the week? Cobra Kai never dies. I haven't watched it yet. It's good. Oh, yeah. Season four, just as good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want to spoil anything. Yeah, if, yeah. It's it's tremendous. They're they're doing. Uh, if you didn't like the character Tori, who was kind of hard to enjoy previously, mm-hmm. uh, she gets fleshed out here in ways that remind me all too much of my own traumatic childhood. So, oh, it's kind of hitting close to home in that regard. Uh oh. Um, but it's but it's very good. The show remains incredibly well written. I did, I've never seen you know a Karate Kid movie, so I didn't know who Cherry Silver was, but it was a uh, it was fun to see him. <laughs> Just, here. I hate him so much. He's he's a he's a, very, he's a shockingly good actor. Whoever this guy is, yeah, and uh, yeah, is he from the original movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the original guy. Oh, they come. That's, that's the great thing about the show is they bring back everybody. <laughs> everybody, like the the girl he had a crush on in the the second Karate Kid, right? Was in last Allie? season. Yeah, they. No, oh, Ali was in the first Karate Kid. Yeah, but it's some um, it's Japanese girl. It doesn't matter. Oh, 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 oh um, you're right. Second, the second one. I know. Oh, well, how do I know this? I've never seen it. <laughs> and I, 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 I thought you were talking about because they brought back what's her name from the from the first movie, the last season too. From the boys. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a but it's a very good show. And uh, cool. Yeah. The 
Yeah, that's it. That's next on my rotation. I got something else I get through first. But CB, yep. what about you? Um, I also have been powering through some uh, some movies. Uh, I sat down over this last weekend and watched Fast the and entire. Furious. No, <laughs> never gonna happen. Uh, I watched the entire Conjuring universe. Oh wow, how many movies you, is that? Yeah, time Four? for that. You can't squeeze in Fast and Furious. Uh, I, I I don't want to watch Fast and Furious. <laughs> um, uh, it's Conjuring One, Two, Three, Curse of La Lorna, Annabelle, Annabelle, I, Annabelle Creation, Annabelle, Annabelle Comes Home, and there was one other one. Ouija. No, Ouija's not part of it. <laughs> I didn't. But uh, yeah, I watched all those. Um, man, that <sighs> overall good series, but uh, it's it's feeling. It's having this like the same effect as a lot of series that run a little too long in the tooth, diminishing returns. CB, I, I feel. How about this for stakes with your with your New Year's resolution? Instead of if you don't do it, me slapping across the face, you have to watch the Fast and the Furious franchise with me. No, I think he'd rather take. The I would 60, rather be sixty seconds of yeah, a stinging face over one hundred twenty. How, how about just one, one, one Fast and the Furious movie of my of my choosing? It will not be Hobbs and Shaw. But that's not the one I would have picked anyway. Yeah, that wouldn't be the so one. So either slap in the face or you sit down and watch a Fast and the Furious movie with me. Fine, you gotta I will watch, watch the, a Fast and Furious movie. You gotta watch the first one. I've, I've seen one and two and then stopped. Oh, well, the that's first your one's problem. so great. Because those were street racing movies. The f- now they're not. The first one has one of my favorite terrible lines of dialogue ever. What is this guy, Tuna Crazy? So bad. I can't believe that they got taken to a film. It's ridiculous. That movie was but more no, of a I... heist movie than it was a street racing movie, wasn't it? Which one? The first one? Yeah. It was a detective no, movie. It's, it's, uh, it's Point Break with Cars. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the, the first two I loved because it was based in street racing. Now it's just like, uh, let's see how ridiculous we can be. Well, the, third, the Tokyo Drifts also. It's, it's actually probably the most street racing focus of all of them. But it's also like Probably. the worst in the entire series. No, it's 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 better than you remember. I don't know. Fast man. and Furious Six is the worst one. If if all right, you know what? If if we if I don't achieve it, we will marathon every Fast and the Furious. Movie. Yes. Also, Let's I want to quickly because guess what? I'm gonna make sure that I hit my goals. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna nail it. And we're gonna be failures. I, I need would, to. I would rather drive a nail through my own hand. Quickly, we for don't the have record, any stakes. F nine is the worst one. I just need. I need to say that. I can't. That's the worst. Oh, one. it's 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 almost too ridiculous. Honestly, that one. It's just also they 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 did they cr- committed the cardinal sin of addressing the ridiculousness. Yeah, with with the uh, you know Tyrese and stuff. Mm-hmm. Bad. Fair enough. Well, not to uh, just follow the train here, but I've got a, a recommendation of a show as well. Uh, I have been is watching a show on. HBO called Station Eleven that was recommended to me, and I kind of went into it fighting it. And my goodness, I am so into this show. <laughs> oh, uh, it is. I'm I'm only about halfway through it. It's actually the last episode doesn't drop until later this week. I'm trying to get caught up on all the episodes before that happens, so I can watch it as it releases. It's real good, man. It is a, a post-apocalyptic show, which I know is kind of all the rage these days. Um, you know, this time it's a post-apocalyptic because of a flu, go figure. Um, but it is, um, it's something else. It's got uh, some lost vibes to it in that they like each, each, uh, and not, not in the sci-fi way in the, uh, you know, how one, one episode is focused on one character and then another episode is focused on one character. Um, it's got, it's, it's a slow burn. Which I'm I'm appreciating the more I watch it, and I've I've hit a turning point, um, on an episode that uh, is just I'm I'm invested. I mean, I was invested after the first episode, and then episode two and three were kind of kind of dry for me, but then it picked up, and I'm just I'm just full on board. I cannot wait to see what happens next. I'm gonna go watch an episode when we leave here. It is it's a story that's told in. So you know how Lost had like way too many characters, or um. Game of Thrones has way too many characters. No, I, I, no, that was never a problem on Lost. Thank you very much. Please no. continue. Okay, well, this one doesn't have as many characters as Lost or Game of Thrones, but the way that it's told is in one episode you'll fl- you'll go through, um, you know, day one of the outbreak to day thirty of the outbreak to 
year 20 of the outbreak. So you're actually seeing characters between like a 20 year span, sometimes within the same episode. And it's, and the writing is brilliant. The way that things kind of come together um, is really, really solid. I'm getting some leftovers vibes from it a little bit, not quite as weird as leftovers, but uh, yeah, station 11 has just some superb acting uh, and, 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 great storytelling that I'm really liking. So Station Eleven, if you haven't heard of it, check it out. It is on HBO Max. It's a Max original, but it is on available on HBO Max. So let me know what you think of it if you guys check it out, because I think, Zach, you, you in particular, I think you both would really like it, actually. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds cool as hell. Yeah. I'll add it to my list. Cool. All right, well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. I want to remind you, uh, once again, that The Gaming Outsider is produced by Nate Lucas, and all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemage and Metroid Metal. His website is stemagemusic.com, S-T-E-M-A-G-E, music.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Zach Parkerson and Chris Behrensmeyer, and we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you.